Greetings, well met. That's hey. my Ben Brode impression. Welcome everybody That's to good. the Archon Team That's League Championships. Good. Live from Plano, Texas. The busiest and most bumping part of the United States of America. My name is Frodan. I'm joined by Kriparian and Noxious on the desk here to bring you guys the weekend's action where one team is going to win a lot of money. We have $250,000 up for grabs. I couldn't be more excited. Crip, how are you doing? Oh, I'm very excited as well. It's actually... Most of the teams are going to win a lot of money, right? Yeah, yeah actually, third place gets, but one team uh, gets nothing. Gets nothing. Third place still gets at least uh, thirty thousand dollars. So that's a pretty good. That's a pretty good haul yeah. for the weekend. It's it's a lot of money. Yeah. I mean, for pe people that are watching, they're like, "What? I want third place." You know, hook me yeah, up. Not bad. Not yeah. bad. Yeah. But um, not just how you doing? Uh, I'm doing just the same. I mean, uh, the, the funny thing about like the money that's being distributed is that the fourth place being like you go home with nothing. Um, I think the worst would be for Nahalem to go there. Um, just they because of the amount of this. effort they had to actually uh, go gotcha, through, like they, they mm -hmm. went through so many hoops to actually get here. Like, yeah. yeah, yeah. There, uh, there has been uh, quite a few matches already. This is the the finale because the players have been playing for uh, many, many games, many, many matches across several weeks, and uh, we got basically the the top half of the uh, of the. Nine starting teams? Eight starting teams? Oh, we had eight, eight, eight starting teams. Eight, starting teams. Yeah. Uh, eight yeah. teams over seven weeks played a round robin stage. Right. We had the top seven go through extensive playoffs, and in the end, the top four have gotten here. Uh, some teams that didn't make it, Force and Boys, uh, Team Archon, and Liquid all uh, fell into the, the respective playoffs. Team Celestial. Uh, better luck next time. They yeah. unfortunately got yeah. the donut, the bagel, the goose. Zero wins. Yeah, Zero and seven. And I think Ooh. it's a good testament. I mean, some some teams are very close in record. Like overall, a lot of people ended 4-3, yeah. you know, 3-4. Uh, and, and it was able to get relatively close. But some teams definitely proved that they were a cut above the others. Well, in terms of uh, the finale here, we uh, we kind of get to see how this works here with the uh, with the brackets. Um, it is it might seem a little bit daunting, but it's it's really not. It's it's fairly simple. Uh, what we're gonna see today is we're gonna see each of the teams play off against each other. Cloud Nine is the first seed, so they got to choose who plays who. They chose to play Tempo Storm, thus uh, forcing Nylum to play Value Town. And uh, today we're just gonna show these guys, and tomorrow we're gonna find out who's going to come up in the top seed, second and third and fourth seed and uh well the next stage of the tournament is going to be very reliant on that yeah i mean it's kind of interesting actually to think about the the format because it's not quite double elimination it looks like mm -hmm. it but it really isn't it and there's a huge incentive to come out ahead on the first day like yeah. there's actually uh, i think it's the single most important match well, i think it's the, sec the second day right yeah second day sorry like yeah. you have to come out ahead right. uh, so the, the, the best way to summarize is that we're right now in a seeding group stage. If you go 2-0, you go automatically to the finals. If you go 2-1, you wait in the third place match, second place match. And then if you go 1-2 or 0-2, then you start in the third, fourth place match. And that's not where you want to be. Uh, yeah. and, and ultimately, we're going to go to day number three. This is what you're looking at. Day number three, we're going to have three matches. Third and fourth place match. And then we go to the semifinal and finally grand final. Yeah, and what that means is uh, one of the teams that will come out the winner after today will eventually be in that, that first first seed. Yeah, and uh, it's also like worth noting that the um, the teams that end up having to go through you know, third and fourth place, they have to, to fight, what, like five, four matches total? If they want to hope to get to the grand final. Three. Uh, yeah. uh, so they have like their first yeah. match and then seeded, and then if they yeah. go through, it's going to be... Uh, Hi hypothetically, like the road for the third place seed is the hardest, because yeah. they won one game yeah, and then they yeah. win three more, and so they have to go four and one yeah. overall. Uh, but I mean, just keep winning. Don't lose. That's like the the motto here. And every team knows that every single win significantly bumps up their chance of winning big prize money. Again, one hundred fifty thousand dollars for first. Yeah, that equals out to fifty k per player. Well, it depends how they're doing the split, right? Maybe sure. some players yeah. are more valuable. <laughs> right. Yeah, like, that's, right. Know, that's right. Kibler so, gets so everything. Kibler, then... <laughs> Kibler, as a master of duels, gets one hundred forty-nine thousand. Wow. That sounds fair. And then Dog and Trump can split the one. Game. Yeah, I think that's fine. I mean, they're already fine. Bad. You know, yeah, viewership wise, they don't need it. Kibler. I mean, in, like... in Texas, five hundred bucks buys you a lot of stuff. It's true. You can live. I actually heard rent here is pretty cheap. I mean, this house is pretty awesome, but yeah, I heard it's yeah. not like insanely expensive as well. Basically, heard it's not even expensive. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's actually cheaper than my rent in yeah. California. So, you know, rip. And you live in like a closet, right? <laughs> yeah, I do. I, I actually live the equivalent of a space of this casting desk. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, that's good. That's I sleep in the I mean, fetal it, position every night. Yeah. And the, the cool thing, I guess, is that you always like feel at home in a casting desk. Yeah, yeah I, I do. Know. I do. That's pretty I sweet. Do. 
Gotcha. So uh, we have actually our matches for today. We have two mm-hmm. matches. Um, tomorrow we'll have three, and then on the last day we'll have three again. Uh, right. And we also have not only the two matches, but we also have a Caster Jepperino. Right. That's what's going to be happening today. And our first match will be Cloud9 versus Tempo Storm. And this this is the match that Tempo Storm wanted. Um, is it? Oh, Cloud9 won. Cloud9. Cloud9, 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 yeah, Cloud9 yeah, finished okay. first seed. And, got was, uh, and they, 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 they got to pick, uh, they got gotcha. to pick who's yeah. facing who. So uh, for some reason, they seem to think Tempo Storm is easy pickings. That's right. Yeah. And in fact, every team, when asked, uh, like, who would they pick, they all pick Tempo Storm. Wow. So... And actually, what happened in the playoff bracket, Archon got the pick because they were the first seed in the playoff bracket. Mm-hmm. They also picked Tempo Storm. So it seems like uh, this, they seem to be the ones that people are targeting. Yeah. I was uh, I was talking to actually uh, some players who were mentioning, you know, the thing about Tempo Storm, and that's what I love, love about the team, is that they're really innovative when it comes to decks. And they'll bring... Um, sometimes decks that you look at and you feel like they're unrefined, but they're actually like functional. Uh, and so people feel more comfortable facing off against rogue decks that might not be optimized, you know, instead of facing off against... Okay. The, uh, yeah, okay. that's I what I've heard. I don't know that's if that's actually heard. the case, though. This yeah. is not out of my I heard him mind. talking to dogs, so maybe, uh, maybe he was talking to dogs. No, no, no it wasn't dog. It wasn't, but I saw it, you guys chatting, been. the complexity bros. They were hamming it up. Well, uh, my, my little take on this is, uh, I mean, I think, I think Tempo Storm actually started out pretty rough when it, yeah, came to, yeah. when it came to the start of the league, and they've actually been killing it recently, uh, especially since uh, the turn of the Grand Tournament where uh, a few more things were possible, mm-hmm. and uh, it seems like Tempo Storm took advantage of that, and uh, now we've actually had quite a bit of a break between uh, the last games in the, in the Archon Team League. Mm-hmm. So, you know, maybe in this period, uh, Tempo Storm has some, some real surprises for us, and it feels, I mean, maybe overall they might be uh, they might be the sucker of the group, but I also think they're maybe even the most dangerous just because yeah. um, of what they can prepare for this. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, there's uh, they're really aware that the Asian metagame as well, which mm-hmm. I think is like a little bit faster than ours as far as uh, ev- like evolving. So very often you'll see the metagame be a little bit ahead, and they they're keeping track. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's uh, it's definitely pretty interesting to see uh, if that's the case here. But I think we're ready for our first match of the day. And so we're going to hop to a Crip video before we start. So do you guys enjoy it? Hey guys, I'm Crip. Now that we are here at the Archon House, all the guys are here. It's been a blast just to chill with them. Uh, everyone's talking about Hearthstone, their impressions of what's going on. The best of 11, six decks, Conquest, you know, that's been really successful since the start of ATLC. It's really brought a, a very a very clean, competitive uh, format to the constructed tournament scene. Now that we, we just got PGT and the players are, bring, are bringing their A-est of A games because so much is on the line. Coming into the finals here at ATLC, uh, uh, the top team, uh, number one seed was Cloud9, and now with uh, TGT, this is the kind of stage in the game where uh, you can take a risk in a tournament and bring a deck that no one's seen before that you can absolutely break the meta on the spot. And this is basically the tournament to do that in. People really like the new Secret Paladin, but I feel like some of the old decks still work pretty well against it, and uh, no- nobody's really seen like the dominant deck. Uh, Patron is still around, of course. Um, I would have to say, based on just general tournament results, the mid-range hunter, I believe, had the highest win rate across uh, the qualifier games. And uh, that deck has evolved a little bit with the, with the Ram Wrangler, with some of the new hunter cards. Uh, people are trying new stuff and they're having some success with it. In the current time in Hearthstone and with so much on the line, really the, the most predictable deck to win is one that we haven't seen yet. You guys should watch ATLC Finals because it's, it's literally the time to see some really crazy decks. There's literally never been more money on the line in terms of the Hearthstone competitive scene. So really, this is going to be, uh, at least for the foreseeable future, the height of tournament Hearthstone. So make sure you don't miss it. Check it out. I mean, you from the TGT expansion. All right, so uh, thanks for that wonderful insight, Crip. I have no idea what I said. <laughs> <laughs> we were like, well, we're like, so what did you say in that video, Crip? Because we don't have the audio of the, right, the video. No, no and then he's like, I, I, don't, I don't even remember. Yeah. Well, the people that are still watching, I guess, uh, are a fan. So, yeah, thanks, oh, guys. Oh, man, there two is. priests in this lineup. That's actually really yeah. cool. And it comes mm-hmm. from two players who love playing the priest right. class. Uh, Gara right. is a big priest player from back in the beta days. And Kalento is one of the only brave players... That brings priests to tournaments uh, where there's a lot on the line. However, priest seems more viable nowadays, and in fact, people are ranking it as one of the most powerful decks in the metagame. Yeah, yeah. There are there are a few tech choices you can you can make. Um, right now, on ladder, a lot of people are just playing generally aggressive decks, and I think really 
a lot of the classic versions of priests just work against that. Uh, we know, uh, I think Kalento's favorite priest deck was just the, the typical control. Uh, sometimes he played like the Death Lord one. Mm -hmm. I think Gar also really liked the typical control priest. But nowadays we even have the, the Dragon Priest making some, uh, some leverage on ladder, doing pretty well against the aggressive decks as well. Uh, the differences among the, the teams, though, is uh, Cloud9 went with a Warlock. And Tempest had a mage. Yeah, and those are two classes where I expected them to not be the ones debating to be cut. Like, wouldn't, right. wouldn't you want to keep the Warlock and maybe even Mage, because it seemed to be popular with Freeze Mage and yeah. Tempo Mage. Uh, and wouldn't you be, like, debating to cut other classes like Druid and other things? But I guess now that TGT's developed a little bit more, we're going to see if it ends up working out for these teams. We have Warlock versus Priest to start things off. Yeah, that's a really lopsided matchup in favor of Warlock, usually, especially if it's, let's Is say, it? Handlock. Yeah, assuming it's Handlock. If it's Handlock, I, I, I think so. Versus Dragon Priest, I think it's a really rough matchup. He's yeah. been playing Zoo. Yeah, he's been playing Zoo almost often. every single week. And well, if, if, it's that if that's Zoo. the case, then yeah. most Priest decks are going to do, I think, favorably against uh, right. Zoo. Yeah, most definitely. It, it, it depends. I guess it's very one sided either way, assuming it, it works out the way it's supposed to. Now, Priest has gotten much better in its consistency and I'm going to assume this is Dragon Priest because I know Gara won't shut up about it and he <laughs> okay. always talks about how great it is and I'm going to assume right. Cloud9 is also running the Dragon right. Priest because that's what Clunto was doing last week. Well uh, the Dragon Priest again it, it does make a pretty big impact on ladder but uh, I haven't really seen it in like a high level tournament play yet uh, I, I don't I don't know if it's quite the same as the traditional priest where you have just amazingly complex decisions where players like Gara can really show off their experience. Mm -hmm. It seems more of like a druid type of play. You just play your biggest minion every single turn. Yeah, yeah. that's also pretty fair as well. Well, that's a pretty good start for uh, mm -hmm. for Gar. I mean, the, just having the Wormist agent is a pretty good start. You don't really need the Twilight Whelp as much necessarily. That's it's not a good bad card, start but... for the Warlock either, though. Yeah, it's a little. Uh, I mean, you, you need to find at least a three drop by the time turn three comes around. Otherwise, you're well, going to if, be blanking. Well, if if you like get it. if you get a buff here and you can kill the Wormrest agent, the um, the Velens blanks out and. It, yeah. Yeah. Like. Yeah, that's a really big deal, actually. It, if Gara loses his first minion, it's going to be really bad. Do you think he might opt to pass just for the safety of it? Keeping or the coin to have like a backup it? plan. No, I don't. I think it's Zoo. I, I think there are no backup plans. Yeah, you can't let you just him play your nice best jumper. stuff every turn and hope for the best. Yeah. Well, in this case, Ecop really needs that extra buff. Oh, and there it is! It right off the top. That's of huge. <laughs> I can't even believe this. It is. It is. I mean, it seems like a worse turn than the last turn. He's, he has fewer stuff on the board, but um, I mean, it, it's not likely that Gar can actually follow oh, wow. up. Wow! Oh, oh my goodness. He does get a great follow up actually with with the North Star Click Power Word Shield play. Yeah. And it's actually Ecop that has no follow-up now. Yeah, uh, unless he, what, what can you get for three mana that will immediately answer this? Because it'll be a one-five. Nothing really buffs it outside that range other than power overwhelming, right? Right, and that's kind of a. It feels a little bad. At least you can life tap on the back of it, right? So if you True. do end up power overwhelming, at least you have a follow-up. Mm -hmm. um, well, some, not amazing. some of these zoo decks have had some weird cards. Ah, that'll do it. Yeah, that'll do it too. Yeah, but it's still a body on the board for Valence Chosen. Um, it's not even that it has to be Valence Chosen on this either. It's just that Priest needs something to stick so that hero power is effective. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, you can actually play the North Shire and just draw a card anyway and outnumber the bodies. Um, also, the other option is just uh, the highest tempo play with the, with the uh, Black, Black Yeah. Which might be reasonable considering on four yeah. mana, you don't want to let your opponent get a really powerful board control and Void Caller will be coming down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's putting uh, that's really putting uh, Ecop in a really awkward spot. I can't think of a single top deck that would stop this. Even if you do get what you want, you'd have to roll Implosion pretty high to get uh, like a guaranteed board state. I think it's still alright, um, unless Gar finds an answer to the Void Caller. But I don't think there are many answers to the Void Caller in the Priest deck. I think I think the typical Dragon Priest actually only runs one Shadow Word Pain, and it wouldn't even really work here. Mm -hmm. Some run the Shadow Madness occasionally, but there's nothing to sacrifice it on anyway, right? So it's, yeah. yeah, it's kind of irrelevant. I think it's going to have to be the case that he triggers the Void Caller on the following turn in Vol'jin's uh, if, a big if a big demon comes out. Well, he does play around Shadow Madness, because if he went face there, then if, assuming he had it, he could hit into the Void Caller yeah, Shadow Madness exactly. and suicide. Now, there is an answer to the Doom Guard, even though it doesn't have power or Shadow Word Death. To remove the five attack or higher minions, still has a Vol'jin, and that's a really powerful removal mm -hmm. tool at Priest. And sometimes, just like Vol'jin timings, can straight up end games because the tempo swing is too far in favor of Priest. Mm -hmm. So, how do you play this turn? Do you just play the Valence Chosen, or do you go Northshire Heal and double trade? Um, well, yeah, it, never I, mind. I think consistently, you're, you're just making the the most uh, the most tempo plays with this deck because. 
Um, if if the warlock can't really get going on the board, it just limits his options yeah. so severely. Yeah. So I guess if you trade, you have to at least be prepared for the follow ups. Yeah. He, he also uses he, he, he has used, black uh, black black and corruptor. Yeah. But he yeah. It's, yeah, that's true. Uh, he also did uh, use an Iron Beak Owl, so he knows that the Valence Chosen buff is likely to stick. Mm -hmm. Therefore, there's a less chance, or a reduced chance, that he can easily deal with this buffed minion. Now, implosion, a high roll implosion can also ruin things, but that's also a 1 in 3 chance, at least based on what we see. I really like the attack from the Void Caller, I mean from the, uh, the Abusive into the Blackwing tag, because it actually plays around like a Power Whelming play. Uh, it forces your opponent to play around Power Whelming on the Void Caller if mm -hmm. he buffs it with Valence Chosen. That's actually a really great play from Ika. Hmm. So what do you think about just uh, going for a, a really lucky implosion here? Wow! Because if, if he gets four, he wins the game. Right. The the dragon priest has like almost no no comeback potential. But if what if you miss, what's the consequence? Do you just potentially get blown out by like Holy Nova? Yeah, I mean, it, I think it's like it's overall fine. I mean, if, you get uh, blown out by Holy Nova with this play. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Lockwood Corruptor though is not going to be enough. Like even if he kills the Doom Guard, the uh, cool. the Imps with the Abusive are going to be fine enough for for Eka. I think I think he's fine here with the Blackwing Corruptor. Yeah. The, the truth is, like if you look at that hand, this deck just plays out the biggest stuff as frequently as you can, and if you don't play the Corruptor here, like what do you play? You can't play the right, Corruptor. Right. So. No, there's no alternative, of course. Yeah. yeah. Well, the, the only kind of alternative is Holy Smite on the five two, and you play the two six body because it has more health. Than the corruptor, but if you do that, you you ruin a lot of value in your next few turns because you might not be able to just slam dunk Vol'jin. Yeah, and sometimes not even having the dragon if you need an enabler later on could also be a bit of an issue. Um... Mm, well, that fills up the rest of the mana curve here. I think I like the abusive over the power of whelm. Yeah. Power of whelm lets you reach for a little bit more in the following turn. Yeah, probably. The next turn you want to play Doctor Boom, mm. so that set of mana is out. Is that, that's still that. fine because like. Probably one of the imps or, or one of the boom bots are going to stay alive, so yeah. you still have more reach on the turn after that, even if you have to make that play. Mm. All right, Cabal, Cabal Shadow, Shadow Priest, Shadow Priest on curve. Yeah. What What do you steal? The egg because of yeah, the threat? Just, just the threat. I mean, those minions are not worth anything. If you steal any of the either ones, it just dies to the board. To the anyway. other one. Sure, yeah. sure. Not to mention, uh, you know, you do have ways to activate the egg to make it really live as well. If you have a second valence chosen, you can make that. Like the holy smite. Busted. Yeah, that, you, you can holy smite your own <laughs> I think you want to save that for Vulcan, though, right. ultimately. Yeah, Vulcan generally. smite is the dream. And it's going to happen on the Dr. Boom if Ecop is going to do that, but I don't really uh, see an alternative. But Titter Mode glitch for, from Ecop's perspective, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. He but we, we, know, we know it's on the board just based on the perspective we have from Gar's side. Mm -hmm. yeah. So definitely yeah. going to be a Volgen. It has to be a boom. <laughs> All right. I mean, actually, I actually think the dream is Volgen Holy Nova, by the way. Oh my god. Yeah. That yeah. Is that is the dream. I think that is the absolute biggest dream. Yeah. Oh. That's, the, that's the only one card answer to Dr. Boom, right? Or a light bomb, bomb. kind of works. Yeah. Depending on your also board twisting state. nether. I mean, you still lose again on you, curve. You yeah. might lose some on stuff curve. There. Yeah, <laughs> unless you have molten giants, then uh, you twisting nether molten giants. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah. That, that's actually great. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you take like eight from the boom box, so you enable them even faster. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like a great play. Uh, all right. Well, um, I think it has to be exactly that. Yeah, I think he's wondering if he trades at all first for it, because uh, maybe he gets higher chance of the Boombot hitting the egg, and then he can Vulgen Smite. There's oh, I like that. Point. That's actually a great point. Nope, that's going to miss. Oh, that sucks. <laughs> Four damage to the face. I mean... Well, it's better than the, the Cabal dying. Yeah. But that's the, that's the only situation. Disastrous. Yeah. Wow, that's 6-7. I mean, Oof. look at the amount of investment Ecob's going to have to yep. make to remove it. Uh, is he going to make it, though? I, I mean, he has so. double power of in his hand. Yeah, like, here comes Doomguard. And like then, it's guaranteed. Yeah, hundred percent. That, that's how much damage with well, the with the boom hitting face. I think that would be lethal, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Four damage to the face. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I think only needed three. But anyway, it's no doom guard this turn. So he, he's gonna power bombing the Vulgen down, and then if he kills off the Cabal Shadow Priest with that boom bot. Yeah, wait. What if the egg pops? I mean, the odds are the same, but do you have to take that all in, or do you just go face and let the priest try to? I mean, he's oh, gonna beat you down over two turns face. if you go face. That's a problem. Yeah, you're probably dead if you go face. Uh, I think you might have to go too face there. Yeah, because priest can heal. Yeah. So if it just ends up being really defensive, it's not that good. Wow, six damage mm -hmm. to face from Boombots. That's not too bad. Yeah. Until you realize it's actually just a little bit above average. <laughs> it's all right. Second power whelming being used here. This is not looking good for Ecop, um, considering that Guard has now some other ways to load the board mm -hmm. with the Twilight Guardian. 
Actually, I'm wondering, um, like, Gar's list is pretty standard, but I think the Cabal is a little bit of a tech choice. Yeah, definitely. I, there, there's really not much room in this Dragon Priest deck for uh, Priest cards, so... Yeah, outside of, like, a couple of removal pieces and right. North Shire Cleric. Yeah. I agree. Just because uh, it's so Dragon Synergy based. Mm -hmm. I feel like Gara is just one of those old school priest players that just doesn't want to give up on some of these tools. So I wouldn't be right. too surprised if he even had a second one. Because Cabal feels so good when it works. Right. right? Yeah, it's like even a shield and mini bot. Right? Amazing. Yeah, amazing tempo swings. And there, now more than ever, there's just more minions that are two attack or less because mm -hmm. TGT has introduced it. All right. Molly plays the Azure. Uh, he still has uh, the taunt. He's got Ysera. Yeah. Uh, he I mean, boss we, we, we talked about how Ecop was probably going to lose this game if he went face, but I don't see how he's going to win the game if now. He, didn't, yeah. he used a Doom Guard. Yeah. He used and two powerful goings. Is he playing like Malganus? Like, that's probably the key. And if he did, he needed to draw like right then. I think if you have Doctor Room, there's a really high chance you have Malganus if you have the Void Collars, which he does. Yep, yeah, fair enough. Yeah, I like the the oh, play man. of the Garamate when not playing the uh, Dwight Guardian, making sure that he doesn't spawn more one ones from the Ms. But not that it's going to be like a huge twice. deal, but no, that egg has been immune to everything. Oh, oh. <laughs> not that uh oh. Well, what's scary is now another juggle can just land on it, and then that's the yeah. other problem he has to deal with. Yeah, so actually, think, yeah. one of the coolest cards here would be a Holy Nova, I believe. That would be devastating, and you d you definitely have Holy Novas in these. Days. Oh well, does that help at all? Not really. No. Yeah, it's actually probably not doing anything. I think it actually does yeah. nothing. It's harmful. Actually, yeah. it, it hurts you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it hurts you. I, I don't think you want to play Light Bomb. I think you you would. I mean, there's no hand from yeah. the Warlock you'd consider just dumping your whole board here. Dragon, Dragon, North Shire even. Would you play Sarah? Or is that too little, yeah. like, value? Because yeah. the thing is, you're not putting a threat, right? Like, it's a delayed uh, lethal you're putting? I, I don't like Ysera here. Okay. If if you play Ysera, you basically force Ecop to go, to go face. Mm -hmm. And because you don't have the taunt... It's he might actually win that way. Yeah. yeah. All right. And you don't even have enough like clearing power outside of your Sarah awakens. A Sarah will only attack one minion per turn. Mm -hmm. You have a lot of ways to take out these smaller minions with just bigger smaller minions. Yeah. And this dragon priest is working is super well. Um, the choice to bring it so far is like mm -hmm. kind of panned out. If you expect, especially uh, Cloud Nine to bring Ooh. the Warlock into the zoo. All right. Not bad. Yeah. It's it's that's a pretty good card. It's helpful, in a way. But he still can juggle on the deck. That'd be disastrous. <laughs> yeah, of course, well, it'll happen, 100%. I, think, I honestly think Ecop needs to get lucky enough to kill the Drake with juggles here. Mm. Which is, there's, there's a lot One of juggles. One out of five. Oh, yeah. that's right, he has the uh, Imp Gang boss. He has Imp Gang boss, he has two off the Creeper, and he has two creatures he could play. Hmm, it's not, it's not impossible, it's a ton of juggles. but, the, the egg but is he has to get lucky, yeah, because if it hits the egg with any of those, he's... Basically, uh, making uh, right. He's resetting. Yeah, he's, he's losing ground on the board. No, nope. to the face. Wow. The juggler is just smorking it. I mean, it's typical. Though. Actually, everything's just been smorking. It yeah, to the face. you're right. Yeah. Boombox. Oh, oh no! no! <laughs> oh. That has to be it. There's no way you come back from that. <laughs> no way. You guys was telling me how good he was feeling today too. He yeah. was like winning Mario Kart I, before this. Uh, I don't. Again. I don't even know if I like that. I feel like you have to go for more lucky juggles. Yeah, you yeah. just like pop order, up the... It's that time of the game where exactly. you just have to get really lucky. Wow! Oh, ah, this is, this, okay, so this is a card that I know Gar loves to death. The Confessor Palatris. He says it's... Uh, he even thought of replacing your Sarah in the deck. He's the right? best. Yeah. I well, like it's, 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 it's a half-decent light bomb, but you have to attack with a 4-4 into that. Yeah. yeah. So, Confessor. Please enlighten me, Frodan. Does Gar uh, play it? Because it's just a win condition that sometimes priests truly lack. Um, and it's one of those really... Imp like... It's just one of those super taunt minions, like you have to remove it. So like, and Priest is pretty good at controlling the board early. Part of what makes Confessor Palatris like, you you think twice about it, is that it feels slow. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. like, how do I get a chance to play it? But this deck excels so much at early game board control that there is a realistic chance you can get value off of it. Alright, well let's see what kind of value we get. I've only seen this card like, once and it wasn't a highlight reel. Like, chill off what I want to see here, that'd be oh, absolutely man, that'd nasty. be crazy. It can't be that, it can't be that. Uh... Oh, oh. <laughs> oh, only a five and minion. <laughs> For two Boring. mana. Boring, God. For yeah. two mana. I actually saw the, the Confessor Peltris in the highlight reel where it was in Arena. He played one, got Chilma. Then the guy played a second Confessor Peltris. Oh, sick. And when he healed, he got two Confessor Peltris from the two Confessor Peltris. <laughs> what? 
Oh my goodness. That's weird. <laughs> That's insane. I, I think I'm going to play her in every deck now. Nice. Is, like, well, uh, Gara basically played 10 12 worth of stats yep. with a potential for more. Yep. Uh, Ecop drew a 3 2 creature that does 3 damage to him. Yeah, that sounds like a very good play right now. Like, you get yourself down to 13, so the game yeah. is lost faster. You can move on with your life. There's yeah. too many targets that you just want to remove as well. Like, yeah. you want to kill the Confessor Paltrow. You do want to stop the piece from drawing cards so that way you can outpace it. But uh, now, like, Ecop. Is, I think he's just thinking if he can win from this position, and I'm pretty sure the answer is no, because even if he deals with this threat, then Ysera comes down onto the board, and that's another win condition in itself. Yeah, if the priest's hand was empty um, and you cleared out the board and got a lucky Doom Guard, you might think you can get What like is the best seven, case here? You have to remove as much damage as you can off the board, but yeah. can you? No, I think I think no, you just can't even play around lethal. Dead yeah, he's just dead. On board, so. Well, first that's game it. to Gara. Oh man, Temple Storm gets on the board. That's right, there but you know go. what? It's a, it's not it's not a sprint crib. It's a marathon. Mm -hmm. It is a marathon. It's usually those last few points that really matter. It's Again, like you guys, can be four one. And yeah, just like it goes to game eleven. Exactly. If you guys are just tuning in, we, we are basically playing the same type of format as we have in yeah. the previous weeks, mm -hmm. but uh, much more is on the line. Uh, and uh, well. We'll have to see now with now with TGT now with that we had we had a little bit of time to like ferment some of the some of the card synergies in these players' minds yeah. and maybe maybe come up with some really cool stuff. So. That was good. So so what do you guys think? I mean, the Confessor Paltris, uh I, I explained maybe why Gar likes it a lot, mm. um, and you got to see it function against a faster deck. Do you have any changing opinions on it at all now you've seen it, or is it just like too small of a sample size? You need to see more games of it. I think that card could have just been any card, and he would have just played Ysera instead for the same effect. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't. I think the swing potential of it in many matchups is good enough to, to actually justify playing. Um, but I don't know if I would cut Ysera necessarily. Like that's okay. I think the biggest mm -hmm. deal against control decks. I guess you True. get an extra threat for free, so they True. have to answer like another legendary and Paltrow is guaranteed. Um, so that might be worth it. Just, it's just interesting because everyone always talks about how fast the metagame yeah. is, right? I mean, these guys, they, they seem to be in good spirits. <laughs> Actually, oh, this Kalento is from earlier. Laughing. This is, is pre-recorded. Kind of for sure, pre-recorded. Yeah, nobody's smiling. I mean, Kalento yeah. was yeah. Uh, saying yesterday, he was talking to me about how the metagame is like super fast, as you mentioned. Um, and he seemed a little frustrated with it. He's like, ladder is 80% like aggressive or fast yeah. decks. Mm -hmm. um, but we saw Dragon Priest do super well. So there's got to yeah. be room with for slower Confessor decks. With Confessor Right. Yeah. yeah, and it could have been very polarizing too. Um, I mean, I I think uh, I think it's still almost impossible, almost impossible yeah, to lose yeah. with like the hand locked variations against Dragon Priest. Yeah, well, and, and you know what's really important is that even more, it's already important in regular conquest, but in team conquest, uh, if you get to know a specific archetype of a class like mm -hmm. it's zoo and you win against it that warlock has to be played again and now you can start cornering it based off of that knowledge exactly. so that was a huge win for tempo storm and i, I think cloud nine uh you know they're still feeling in good spears but they definitely are not happy about that yeah well. if you look at the lineups though like what does the zoo from ecob want to line up against there's a druid that it has a slight advantage over maybe less now that there's darnassus aspiring mm -hmm. um the hunters are pretty bit like pretty bad matchup the warrior could be also very difficult. Paladin, I guess, is more of a coin flip. Maybe even yeah, difficult nowadays. If there's one person to play like a slower paladin, it would be Strife Crow. Right. But I think he's even come around on mid range mysterious challenger paladin. So I think uh, you know they just call it fast paladin. It's not really mid range. Yeah. yeah. I think I think the zoo deck is a bit of a risk. Yeah. Um, it, it's just a deck. I mean, you look at those lineups, and it's like I've seen that on ladder. I've seen that on ladder. I've seen that on ladder. But you don't really see zoo warlock much on ladder. I think there's you know some. Yeah. Some reasoning behind that. It, it's just hard because the zoo feels like it's in an awkward spot relative yeah. to other fast decks. Like the hunter still is very good against it. The paladin's good at controlling the board. Like it, you'll never really bounce back from all those secrets and competitive spirits and avengers. Because mm -hmm. again, the zoo is benefit off of snowballing the board and usually it leverages its own buffs. But when you get consistent buffs like Avenge and Competitive Spirit, how right. do you keep up with that pace on shielded mini bots and Argent Squires? It's just really hard. Yeah, like the Paladin tools that were given to them initially, you know, Muster for Battle and Shielded yeah, Mini exactly. Bot, which were exactly. there to kind of eagleize the tempo because mm -hmm. they used to be terrible at getting that like through turn one to four. Um, and now that they have that, now they transition into even like a, a better mid game. It's kind of uh, it's kind of impossible, in fact. Yep. Stop. I, I think I'm curious also to see what the warrior splits on. I think a lot of people are still very high on patron here. Um, but I I'm not so. sure if anyone would be like ahead of that and be like, well, maybe we bring control warrior or dragon warrior to try to yep. beat that. We've seen we've seen dragon warrior a bit on ladder with that new Alistraz's champion card. Yep. Yeah, um, it's cool. I haven't seen it be too successful, but I'm I'm actually really hoping they bring it because uh, I, I like the spikes. You know, I yeah, I, yeah. I really like uh, some of the new cards seen play. Uh, I mean, what Gara brought was pretty cool. 
It, it is some cool. ideas flowing. It, it makes sense yeah. too because yeah. if you think about it, the Confe- Confessor Paletris, it's like it's all about securing your early game board, and that's where cards like the Cabal Shadow Priest make sure you right. don't die early on. That makes and, sense, and that's where like all these tech decisions might synergize, as opposed to mm. like I like this card, I'm putting it in. You know, it, it actually has a that works too. Strategy. That, that's how I play Sometimes. Lord Walker yeah, show but, everywhere, right? Like that, sure, yeah. it, it seems like it makes a long sense, but then maybe he's weaker against uh, some other kind of deck. So I'm pretty excited to Battle see this Warriors. because uh, Kalento yesterday was talking about like uh, Alexstrasza's champion, as you mentioned, and he was saying there's probably a minion base warrior deck to make with it mm-hmm. that is you know dragon base but not on the control side really just like minion heavy like mid-range um, dragon yeah something along those then... lines he's he's been building uh, a deck like this and it, it worked mm-hmm. really well on ladder yesterday well here's a here's a spoiler alert anything Kalento builds it works, works on well ladder on yeah okay <laughs> he's climbed in a number one countless times with decks that <laughs> should have no business being there right yeah he's also um kind of played a bit risky in some of the bigger tournaments he's attended he just brought like completely new decks yeah um i think you know when when people were saying how there was like eight classes in the game and then there was priest mm-hmm. and then you know Next week, we actually see Kalanto take like a tournament by storm with an anti-aggro priest yeah, or something an, an like that. Yeah, an open tournament. I guess like yeah. 256 players exactly. just brings priest yeah. and wins. Yeah. All right, so the players are getting ready. Amaz is uh, overseeing the entire process. And uh, one Jason. thing we didn't talk about is, is that trophy there. We, I mean, Amaz is kind of blocking it there, but we'll, we'll <laughs> oh, see. I, it again. I thought you were calling Amaz the trophy, and it's like, hmm. Oh, that's well, there, there is the trophy. Yeah. It's, it's it's reflective of the Archon League Team League Championships logo, I believe. I'm looking behind me. I mean, it says Archon Team on it. Oh, yeah, that's interesting. So if oh, you if you get it, if yeah. you win, you're actually so, recruited. The, oh yeah, that's how it works. Yeah. Right? Oh wow. So they write, they induct a new member. It's a ceremony. Yeah. Wow. I'm pretty sure what it's what they Which is why they tried to get out of it, so they can recruit prize. their own team members. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but it, it does look pretty cool. I yeah. mean, uh, most tournaments kind of kind of just buy trophies and just go with whatever. I'm pretty I, I kind of sure, like the custom. I'm pretty sure you can't put that in your carry on though. That's probably a, a legal weapon. Right. Oh, it's a weapon. Yeah. Yeah. Just look at how sharp those edges right. are. Maybe it has like some disassembly and reassembly potential. Would you would you cool. do it? Oh. All right, well we know what they're both playing. Yeah, looks like it's going to be a raging worgen OTK. Yeah? <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> oh, Magnetor, Magnetor uh, Alpha with charge. Kalento was playing that on ladder yesterday. It was a beautiful moment. Uh, yes. Wow. Yeah. I, I think I know what that card is. The, yeah. The 5 it's 3. Like the full the, I have not yeah. seen that play. It's magnificent with charge plus 2 attack. It's like the best and most amusing removal in the game. But Remove 3 cards off the board. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> it is pretty cool. And lose the Magnetor, of mm-hmm. course. Mm-hmm. Well, um, yeah, Kalento is known for his very, very consistent Grim Patron play. Uh, I think Typed has played like some really wild turns. I think um, if there's any like very strange Grim Patron play, it's going to come from Hyped. But uh, I mean, it always it always gets me thinking, and it certainly with Grim Patron, it's one of those decks where you you want to learn more, even though. Um, you know, it seems like a very non-standard counterintuitive right. play. Mm-hmm. You always kind of learn something. You always learn there's maybe another option to playing the yeah. deck. Yeah. The Unstable Ghoul, I think, is a really big uh, card to play in that deck. It's one of the trickiest ones to, to land because sometimes you want to play it early. Sometimes you want to play it mid-game. Sometimes mm-hmm. you need to, you have it on the board and you need to get rid of it, um, especially in the patron mirror match. So, mm-hmm. Well, one thing that is still unanimous uh, in this matchup is whoever can grab that early game board control yeah. usually has a overwhelming advantage. Kalento already has a Grim Patron in hand. If he gets, you know, the death spite and then able to whirlwind something out and just get four patrons, then it's just really difficult for Hype to come back from that spot. Yeah. Well, there's well, the there it is. Yeah. We're missing uh, we're missing the inner rage, I think, to seal this in like a very uh, kind of. Yeah. I mean, you also can just play on curve. When you go second, you have the coin, so you can't like coin out death spite yeah. and then play patron. In. So you usually just play it on curve, and then you even have the coin world on five. Mm. Well, if he's playing the acolyte, he definitely has to enrage it, I believe, uh, just because otherwise that card might be dead. He has he has no other combo with it. Uh, Hyped is just looking to draw cards right now. I've also seen this aspect of play where uh, one player just drew way more cards than the other and he was able to counter all the plays of the other player. Yeah, that's true. There is the draw a billion cards and answer everything type of play. Yeah, but it's a little bit difficult, I guess, in Patron because Hyped is a player that I usually see play Control Warrior. Um, so when you say you know he makes wild lines of play with Patron, I wonder if that's just because... He makes him his... with Control oh. Warrior too. Oh, man. Really? Yeah. Interesting. That's an inner age, guys. Oh, okay. That's an inner age with the death by Yeah. Yeah. Well, okay, so, I mean, how do you come back from this? I mean, I've seen some variants of Patreon include Brawl, but I don't think I've seen any in the last month. Well, the thing it's is, kind of like is this combo is still a few turns away, because I feel right now you have to Death Spite. Yeah, but you need Battle Rage next turn. You could slam, honestly. Right? Mm. 
But Battle Rage will probably draw you one card. I think the Armorsmith is going to die. So you want to slam ever? Just to kill the Acolyte? I mean, slam to kill the Acolyte so you can save the coin for a, for Death's a yeah, turn and six, a turn five Grim Patron coin whirlwind in a rage. That's by hit. Oh, maybe that's too much. Yeah. yeah, the extra whirlwind might be too much. Yeah, the coin isn't needed anymore. Not, I mean, now six patrons is a lot yeah. to yeah. deal with. I, actually, I don't mind that. Okay, well, it looks like he is going with that line of play. So he's going with his big heavy win condition of, I'm going to dominate the board now. Uh, my opponent needs to set Death Spite and have the uh, Grim Patron in order to be relevant on the board. Uh, it looks very difficult. I mean, the, the hand from Hype right now isn't looking exactly amazing. Um, yeah. He's got the ghouls, but the ghouls will just feed into the patrons. Sometimes you get a crazy turn where they can get ghouls to detonate and pull all the patrons on one health without, you know, uh, duplicating themselves. And then you can sometimes well in them off. But I think that's some. I think board. you're overrating that sometimes. Yeah, yeah. It's like it happens once in a blue. I moon. think that sometimes is some is something I've never seen. Actually. Really? Seldom. <laughs> <Salvo, man. laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. Interesting. I don't, I don't think I've seen the the ghoul whirlwind clear of patrons. I have. It, okay. It's kind of interesting because like you have a patron on three, then you attack. Yeah. It no, no. It, it makes sense. I just <laughs> I just right. think it usually just doesn't work out that way. Yeah. Yeah. It's optimistic to say the least, mm -hmm. but at the same time. Um, it might get to that point if Clunto ends up really committing hard to the whirlwinds. Well, if he does all of that, Hype does not have a clear right now. No. Yeah. And and if Hype doesn't clear, Clunto draws another like six cards. I right. mean, that's just done. Well, yeah, yeah you're right. right on the following battle rage. Yeah. That's six. That's six patrons next turn. I mean, Hype's best play here is a no mission better, so we can continue to cycle. Yeah, but it's, it feels mediocre because at the same time right. you're you know you're fitting into the death spite. Um, but what can you do really? I mean, you probably have to feed into the death spite anyway. You yeah. can't really yeah. assume that uh, Kalento's hand is as perfect as it is. He either swings at your face or he swings at the no, no mission better. Yeah, and with one mana, you can't really hope to pick anything else up here. Uh, you can't actually abuse the uh, the AoEs that are no. coming up. The the ghouls aren't set up, so you can't go with your counter patron turn either. Uh, yeah, looking a little bit weird. I guess if you get an oh Emperor my. person... Well, second patron is a little luxurious. Yeah. I think he's still going to battle rage next turn, and I feel like he would dump his coin. Um, I think you just go for the... Yeah, you just go for the max patron turns yeah. here. Yep. And show the top. You, would you would you go all in and dump the whirlwind as well? Yes. Yeah. Get, get some more armor. Yeah. Yeah, it's a lot of armor. It's a lot of. Uh, of I think you make board. the attack first though. Yeah. Mm -hmm. With the with the weapon, just so you could lose that one health for the extra card on battle rage. Sure. That is that is absolutely the perfect sequencing. Yep. And that is four damage patrons, I believe. Um, it's gonna be five total because that five one is gonna die. Yeah. Uh, so. I have to roll a five on the board. Oh, yeah, you're three right. Three damage right. patrons. So four draws off the, uh, yeah. the battle rage. That's pretty hard. I don't really, I don't foresee Hype playing Brawl or any card here to help get him back. If oh, he did, wait, he's, be, not, he's up to six. That'd be ridiculous. How do we? Yeah, right. there, six, six, yeah it was, was going to be six patrons no matter what. No matter we're just what, talking about yeah, the damage the patrons. Damage yeah, damage. It's three damage patrons. Mm -hmm. So he draws a second patron. That doesn't really help here. Uh, how many can he? He only can slam Fiery War Axe and execute one, right? So that's. That's not helpful at all. That's, that's not too bad, actually. It's not bad. You can get rid of... Like, the fact that you can even kill some is, like, yeah, a decent step. The problem is, if there's even one more whirlwind effect at all, you're pretty much... Well, I mean, these guys are both playing patron warriors, so even if there's just one <laughs> patron left, right. suddenly next turn you have another six you have to deal with. Right. Yeah. That's just typically how the the game works out. Yeah. Did you see the um the the poster that that was made for the uh, the announcement of the BlizzCon qualifiers? No. It's like a bunch of patrons, and it says everybody get in here. Okay. I got triggered. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, here I think you just considered doing like very little. Slam. Yeah. Would you execute the other three too, and then just whack one down? You kind of don't have the choice, don't you? Like a. Uh, What's his follow-up plays? I mean, he does have Warsong Commander, but his options are pretty limited without a bunch of spells. Mm. I mean, you could go Grim Patron Ghoul, that would give you, you know, an extra patron. And him... Oh, Kanta could just play another patron. Yeah! He yeah. <laughs> <laughs> couldn't deal with these three other ones. Yeah. So let's give him a fourth one. I mean, the Thorson on curve here is very good, too. This, yeah. this almost spells like the end. I don't even know what hype can really draw. Mm, that doesn't. Well, does that help? Is he still alive at the end of the next turn? Assuming he goes and attacks yeah. this patron, he, he's, yeah. He's alive if he if he goes yeah. if he goes into the patron, um, then he has his own Warsong patron play, and he's at least going to get 
two patrons. <laughs> right. Is there a chance that's enough? Because the War Song allows him to kill whatever patrons the Kalento puts out, right? Yeah. So he gets a little bit of an edge as far as trading goes, but not a big one. I wonder and if there's some weird fringe scenario where you can, like, clear the board with just the, the War Song and Unstable Ghouls and stuff next turn. Because the thing is, he, he might be but too He, he can draw into lethal here. He's only six damage out. It's um, three. Okay. You can draw yeah. another two cards. With or it's that. five damage out, actually. Five damage out, yeah. He doesn't if he, if he had a cruel more. task instead of that shield block, that would have been it. So. Mm. Oh, okay. Well, he can still draw two more. Yeah. Give an opportunity to go for that lethal. Or another inner rage, yeah. right? Oh, that's right. Yeah. Inner rage will also, also that's do right. it. So shield block into inner rage would do it. I was thinking about it. He probably knows something bad's happening next turn. So yeah. he's, he's calculating the odds of drawing lethal. And I think they're pretty reasonable. Oh, yeah. Battle rage is even better. He already got one piece, so... Oh, uh, you got that same wheel. piece twice. Yeah. Got to dual wheel these axes. Wind Fury, the Fire War axes. Yeah. I think I like the Acolyte uh, Fire War axe play here, just because your opponent's gonna be so low, it doesn't actually doesn't actually matter if you give him another patron. Goodness. Okay. He wants the, the whirlwind effect to create more patrons on his side. Mm -hmm. Okay. That seems fun too. I mean, honestly, I think any of these options are okay. Um, I mean that whirlwind. Oh, effect. Can, can he do whatever we were talking about earlier here? Yeah, the, the board maybe, maybe he can actually. Yeah, yeah. I, I think he can. Like this is probably the moment to do it, if ever. I don't know done. though. There's a three-one patron, so it ends up spawning one based off its absence, and then yeah, but that's fine because you have like you have work. two ghouls and a whirlwind and the death bite. That, that's like that's a lot of AOE. Mm. But you have to attack at least one ghoul into the emperor if you want it to die from AOE damage overall. I think I think you can't do it, cause you, you have to spread around the ghoul on not a patron target. So I think yeah, it's pretty much over. If you could attack the two patrons with the ghouls, I think there might be a way. But since you can't face tank any of the you just minions, you just can't equalize the grim patron health. Yeah, it's always like a bit lopsided. Yeah, yeah so he's just gonna that. end it. Not even try. Yeah, put it, put himself out of the misery, I guess. Uh, it's it, like this is typically the way the matchup goes, right? Yeah. Like mm -hmm. sometimes you have a crazy comeback with frothing, but usually turn five, like a uh, first guy to get patrons out just takes it. All right. Well, that first guy is Kalento, and he gets uh, Cloud Nine's first point on yeah. the board. There. A very big one too. But at the same time, I think pe players on every team are. Uh, accepting of the fact that patron just goes through. Like, I don't yeah. think they're like, oh no, but like, the, so many oh, weeks patron got it. So, so it's actually a best of nine is what you're saying? Right? Yeah. Okay. I mean, I mean, we, we, we say that, like, I think every week, but it turns out, like, maybe, like, one in three weeks that we've cast so far, it's just not the case. Like, That's true. Like, sometimes patrons fail. Yeah. They're just, at least in the past, there used to be a lot of decks that just counter the top deck, mm -hmm. and the I mean, that was Patron, so uh, I think that actually still is the case. If you look at some of the lineups, Patron uh, often doesn't do terrific against Hunter. Um, often it loses to Druid. Uh, Paladin's way stronger now. It's still probably a good matchup for Patron, but I mean, you wouldn't fault them for getting run over by Secret Paladin. Yeah, because it's yeah. really fast. But, you know, Warlock is the zoo instead of the mm -hmm. Handlock, so that's a really big plus yeah. there. Because if... Uh, Temple Storm lost that match, and then Cloud Nine had the hand lock. Yeah. That'd be mm -hmm. a very dangerous, right. dangerous scenario. Yeah, I think the uh, the Zoo Lock, as we were talking about earlier, might be the downfall of Cloud Nine, just because it's that one deck that doesn't seem to have anything that it matches up super well against. Mm -hmm. um, it has like a sixty-five or seventy percent upside over it. Mm -hmm. um, not anymore, at least. Now that Druid's mm -hmm. a little bit better at being consistent with the early yeah. game. Well, uh, looks like uh, Hyped and Gara are talking things over. Of course, Eloise is not here in America. She right. was landlocked in China due to some visa problems. Her and RDU could not make the event, unfortunately. Yeah. So they will be playing uh, online. Yes, remotely. Remotely. We, we will get their webcams and everything. Don't worry. Yeah. Hopefully. Uh, okay, so uh, now we have Hype coming off of a loss. Uh, all, all the rules in the past few weeks are still in effect. Yeah, right. We still have the bench rule. We have an actual bench have, for you guys. We literally have a piece of wood for them to sit on. Yes. Yeah. It's there, a little, it, it looked very uncomfortable. Oh, they should be. Well, yeah. How do you do it if there's like a triple bench, right? Hmm? Do they just all go sit there? They all sit there and they okay. can't leave for the rest of the day. It's the rest of the day? Yeah, they have to share the bench with whoever gets benched from that point. That sounds really cool. All right, well, I wonder how many players can be benched at once. Three, we had it last time, didn't you? See? Yeah. Could, could, could both teams have bench players? No, they couldn't because like one has to win, right? Right. It's yeah, well, as, soon as, as soon as someone wins on the right. team, yeah. uh, they get unbenched. Right, right. All right. So, 
I have to ask a question because I get a lot of answers that are different. Like Secret Paladin and Patron, some like they're both tier one decks, but some people say Patron is very favored. Other ones say that Paladin is like sixty percent against Patron uh, with the secret um, variants. Is it okay. just a mid range one? Or? I just feel like uh, the main win condition for decks in general against Patron is you just run them over, right. and Paladin does that. Um, it probably has a lot to do with lists because I mean TGT has only been out for a couple weeks. And people experimented a lot with Secret Paladin in that time. We've seen Secret Paladin from basically Agro Pally with just yeah. you know the uh, the Mysterious Challenger, and that's basically the deck. We've also seen that deck with like Tyrion and stuff. So yeah, um, I think often people are just talking about different things. Um, so it's kind of hard, I guess. If, yeah. if you, I assume like the mid range variant would be better because you've got Shredders; they're more sticky, like against say. Uh, a patron deck, they, like warriors have trouble know. dealing with it. I think I actually favor the more aggressive one right. because the more aggressive decks run double divine favor, and Grim Patron needs to actually hoard cards until like turn six or seven. Makes sense, yeah, yeah. makes sense. All right, so E Cup is going to be running with his hunter against a paladin. We have to assume secret. I mean, uh, hyped seemed like he did like the archetype, and I think everybody does really. Like in competitive play, it seems like paladin's just going to have a spot for a while. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, I think so far in the tournament, the Secret Paladin has not done too well. Yeah. But um, Conquest does resemble uh, the ladder format pretty well. And uh, yeah, I mean, in ladder, this is the deck to be playing right now, I guess. This is the deck that everyone wants to kill. Yeah. Yeah. It's the deck that people are teching so that way they can defeat it. Uh, so much so that hunters are considering running a flare yeah. just to kill these kind but of that's, paladins. But this is the thing too. Like in, in tournaments, you kind of want decks that are just really powerful, but you don't want decks that can be countered very easily. And if you really think about it, um, the Secret Paladin is not that. Like there are decks that just crush Secret Paladin, like Freeze Mage, Handlock, that kind of stuff. Secret Paladin just doesn't win against those. Yeah. So in, in tournament format, uh, the Secret Paladin might be worse than its appearance on ladder, but I still feel it has a pretty good spot. Yeah, I mean, I wonder if Ecop, if you expect a uh, Temple Storm to bring Freeze Mage, right, and Paladin, a, f a single flare in a mid-range Hunter list wouldn't be out of the ordinary, right? Like it would mm -hmm. kind of yeah. make sense as, as a one of. Um, so yeah, maybe Ecop is going to be playing that. I wonder if he's going to be playing more of a beast mid-range. Uh, if he's playing mid-range, of course, he might still be bringing face or hybrid. No, I think the consensus is that you don't bring face hunter to this tournament. That's I think, over. I think yeah. the only player to bring face hunter Frozen constantly Ice. was Frozen Ice, and he maybe not coincidentally had the worst uh, record of the tournament. Yeah, right. but I mean, it was a seven-week tournament, so that means seven weeks of bad face hunter. Yeah. It's, and people and people still complain about losing to it, which is still hilarious. Yeah, I think it's mostly the interactive. Uh, yeah, I think course, it's just yeah. mostly it, it's a terrible feeling. Yeah, it's like oh okay, face hunter. Help I guess I guess I drew badly, so I lost. You know, I yeah. mean, even face hunter against hybrid hunter these days doesn't even feel like as face hunter favor as it should be. Yeah, mm -hmm. so it just feels like uh, you know, hunter didn't get the most tools from TGT, but they definitely got a couple tools that can help them out. I think it also tricked players into thinking slower decks were better. So people just played yeah. slower decks and got destroyed by Hunter. Yeah, they got completely punished for not... Because, I mean, at early TGT, no decks were refined yeah. like on the ladder for about a week. You they're nothing. still not, right? Right. Yeah. Well, some of them are being refined. I think, mm -hmm. like, Secret Paladin is getting there. It's yeah. kind of close to... Um, one, well, one Hunter deck I want to come out more is the Ram Wrangler Hunter deck. I know Crit played a little I, bit of it. I did my best to forward this yeah. idea. Uh, Rackful was also putting mm -hmm. that idea forward a little bit on ladder. And I think uh, that card has a lot of potential. Sure, it has a lot of variant swings. You could get Captain Spirit all the way to King Crush. Uh, but it's definitely one of the most fun cards yeah. I think, yeah. to play. There's, a, there's an argument to be made as well in mid-range right now for not running Mad Scientist in that specific beast wow. deck and running Scavenging. That's brave. I have not heard that one. That's scavenging brave. Hyena. Like, there's a few players who have reached like, top 5 legends with mid-range We've with, seen uh, decks with, with both beast. of those cards though, right? We, I mean, um, I think the one Rekful was playing is Mad Scientist and Scavenging. Definitely Hyena. possible. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's very brave. I mean, there's a lot of ideas. Like, I think Crips was to put uh, the Tiger, Stranglethorn yeah. Tiger, so that we yeah. guarantee have stealth and then um, have the minions. You just have for beast random. triggers. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's it. Um, and then there's obviously, like, beer traps, so that way uh, th that helps you set up Hound Masters and Ram mm -hmm. Wranglers a turn before. Everything, so. yeah. I like that. Yeah. I like that approach. Mm -hmm. I think bear trap's a perfect card, like, for, as far as enabling beasts. So, sometimes that's the issue. You don't have a beast already set yeah. up. Um, and if the opponent plays around other traps, sometimes bear trap will go off mm -hmm. uh, and just get you a free 3 3. Well, that is abusive, Sergeant. Um, yeah. That doesn't scream face hunter, but it, it doesn't. Uh, 
doesn't, doesn't write it off. It. Yeah. yeah, it does enable it. Yeah, it doesn't look like... Uh, what about the hunter. secrets here? Does that kind of tell us what it is for the Paladin? No. Well, I rep well, okay. Repentance just goes in every deck. Re yeah. Repentance <laughs> is one of those flexible spots, and I think that makes me lean towards this being a very fast secrets Paladin, as opposed to the mid rangey type ones. Yeah. But even then, the mid the, the fast ones might even throw in, like... I think just the Doctor Boom, and then it's like, oh yeah, I top out Doctor Boom, but I have like curve one to four. kind of like like uh, yeah. if you look at the um, Hybrid Hunter, right? Like they they're Face Hunter, but they curve with two high mains mm -hmm. and Doctor Boom, where you have uh, Paladin, you know, aggressive, just playing two Mistress Challengers and the Doctor Boom. Well, you have the option of Freeze Trap or the Owl here. Um, the trap looks good. The trap does look good. Often later on, it just hits on one one. So I think. I think in terms of the game overall, the freeze trap is much less valuable as the game progresses. Yeah. While it does basically the same job here. All right. So Eloise is definitely going to try to get a free ticket to triggering the trap with the 1-1. One -one, but the problem is Ekov can deny that as long as he wants. Yeah. And then uh, no, he can't. If she plays uh, Redemption. Redemption. Yeah. He, like, she has to play Redemption oh, in order yeah. to guarantee the trigger. And then that would give a, a minion to stick on the board for Blessing of Kings. Yeah, I right. think that's the right play. Yeah. Nikov's hand looks well prepared against Secret Valley, at least. I mean, he's got the bow. He might get a charge off of it because it might be developed before uh, the minions end up attacking. And the owl denies any kind the of crazy, crazy buffs. The crazy thing is Redemption might trade for Unleash. Wow. Oh, yeah. Because the Unleash would be able to attack everything twice yeah. into it. Well, she goes for it. I mean, she already, already committed to the line that this is not... Explosive trap, right? Mm -hmm. It's not some mind game, right? So she needs to go for that redemption play. All right. Well, Ecop also has the bow, so Ecop e yeah. Ecop has some choices here, and none of them are terrible. And he's still got the double unleash, right. so you have to think he's in a good spot. Yeah, he needs to play around. You know, noble sacrifice. Um, has he? No, he's yeah, already played the around. Noble that. sacrifice already, is something to be. Concerned it's already about. been played around, but like the new secret that came out, you have no idea what it is. So noble sack could be an issue if it's noble sack and avenge. Since you play the bow, you can't owl, uh, which you know forces you in a bit of an awkward spot right. for the following turn. He might even opt to try to attack first and then evaluate, because if it is Noble Sacrifice, right. then Unleash might be better. Why yeah. is the secret sideways? She doesn't have two secrets up, does she? She does. She, does, she yeah. played Avenge on turn one. Oh, I missed that. Alright, alright. So all right. that's why this is really complicated for Ecop, because he has yeah. to decide if it's going to be Noble Sacrifice. Is it going right, to be right. a, a Redemption? Yeah, either way, it's a little bit troublesome. I mean, if... If Noble Sacrifice is there, I guess it kind of acts as a redemption in this case because it just spawns an extra right. minion. Either way, uh, you can treat it the same. It can avenge the minion that it spawned in some cases, but I guess not in this one. Yeah. Right. Yeah, but then cause... this needs to trade into the 1-1. One -one. Right. I think if, if the secrets were played in reverse order, avenge could trigger on the minion that was spawned. In which case, uh, Ecop's play would have misplayed half yeah. the time. Right. So Ecop's still huh. in a great position. That's so interesting. interesting. Yeah, yeah, it's it really, is. really interesting. It's also the player order, I think, right? There's something, like somebody did the Hearthstone science on this. Um, it also depends on who has the player priority. So does this, does this deck right. play Divine Favor anymore these days? Um, the, the some of them do, some of them don't. Um, <laughs> that, the, thank you, Crip. <laughs> the, uh, well, I'm laughing because the Warrior Infiltrator got drawn and the Repentance is about to get literally zero, zero value. value. Yeah. Well, it's going to get zero value anyway. anyway There's yeah. nothing with health in that hand. Yeah. But um, the, the guys who are running uh, Divine Favors generally run... Uh, more little minions and fewer tech cards because you just can't like you, you see Lothab basically yeah so Lothab means it's probably not running divine favor because right. you can't have cards that you have to hold uh, they just they just have like exclusive cards like the decks are just completely different so um, often the decks that run divine favor don't run silence is the <sighs> other thing Oh my god, yeah, you're right. Oh, are you yeah, okay for right. it in? Sorry, it's just like that's just nasty. You follow yeah. up Lothab with the mysterious challenger yeah, I mean, but you still can't break that freeze trap. Yeah. You, I mean, I don't think you mind having things like Lothab pop back and then you can hit pretty hard. Like, he might just kill it, right? Uh. It's all about what... So, here's the deal. If she wants to get Lothab back, she attacks uh, She attacks next turn. But there's a risk that Ekov just uses the bow and the worgen to kill uh, Lothab, right? Which is then... I mean, you still have the Mysterious Challenger anyways to fall back upon. Well, is that going to be an Iron Beak Owl Arcane Golem turn? I think that might be decent. Yeah, you can actually kill a minibot with a worgen and then uh, go face. Hmm. The thing is, if you see Lothab, you... I mean, I know some of these decks even cut Consecrate, but if you see Lothab, you, you can expect that's in there. Yeah, you're right. Consecrate could be devastating. 
I mean, that, that owl onto the minibot, too, was also pretty big. Yeah. You know, that, that's, like, a huge problem for uh, the pound to deal with. But now there's the Mysterious Challenger, and that's even more problems. Yeah. Do you even You're just taking it? a lot of damage, though, man. Like, a lot of damage. Yeah. 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 Like, if you play the Mysterious Challenger and bounce Lothab, you basically kill yourself. Well, is it really that? I mean, yeah. Okay, it's pretty bad. It's yeah, pretty it's bad. really bad because you have to replay Lothab. But, but you still can't. You don't, well, you don't have to attack with Lothab. This right, time. but if you don't attack with Lothab, then when are you attacking? Turn 8? Turn 9? I don't know. Because, I mean, there might be a 2 1 that stays up, but like, Ecos can deal with that. That freeze trap has basically yeah. put Elevis <laughs> out of the game. So, like, the right. entire game. It's you, insane. You just can't play around it. Yeah. The fact that she's playing a slower, more reactive version of the Mysterious Challenger Paladin makes it so she's just out of options against Freeze Trap. Do you replay? No, you have to play Mysterious. So we have, like, we know all the traps that are going to be coming okay. out. Um, so it's probably everything minus Repentance. Repentance you never play right. two of. Exactly. Oh, wow. Another Arcane Gold. That one. is on curve. I mean, this looks as face huntery as it gets, by the way, and we're kind of right. racking on it a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the deck is not very good. Uh, yeah. It kind of doesn't perform well, very well, and then... Yeah, you have happen. to imagine, though, that if Eloise is playing, like, the hyper-aggressive Secret Paladin, uh, Ecop would probably have no chance. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. It really worked out uh, just maybe by chance, or maybe Cloud9 knows, you know? Yeah, yeah, sure, they could have done the scouting information for this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Mr. Challenger is going to sit there and be like, Hey, I'm buffed. So what? Like, there's nothing he can do here. Like, you get the extra Hound to deal with the 2-1. That can't tank the trap. Yeah, I believe this last Seeker is competitive. Spirit, yes, right? it has yeah. to be. Actually, it might not be. Might be her, her, deck, her deck is, is really, really slow. Right. Uh, but, uh, I, I, well, what, what other suit could it be? It can't eye be for an eye? No, right. it, can't be <laughs> it can't be anything else. There's only six so, Seekers as well, so I don't think... It, it would have to be another Repentance, repentance. right? Yeah. And it's not. Okay, good. <laughs> So there's competitive spirit, Eloise can swing in for 10 damage, and so then she would die. consecration, basically? Pretty yeah. much. And even with consecration, like, the hunter can probably raise Eloise. Um, maybe. I mean, that would be a two-turn clock. Yeah, with Freezing Trap, you're still kind of, uh... You can't attack first, so you have to replay. <laughs> oh, man, Freezing Trap. Yeah. yeah. MVP. <laughs> you actually, insane. yeah, you have to loathe it here. Just to not die. You have to attack the 4-2 Lothab and dude. Wow. You can't attack though. Well, like, no, you can't. The freezing trap is freezing out. Trap. It's out now. Lothab oh, okay. got bounced back. Oh, you're yeah. right. You're right. You're right. Yeah, that's why Lothab got seven. I was like, look, am I oh, missing all these traps? Was there another my, freeze my, trap that I missed? Are you kidding me? Was on the board. <laughs> yeah. Okay. No. Crips not actually watching the game. Yeah. We're just like telling him uh, what's going on. All right. And now Luis needs like uh, some kind of life gain to stay in this. True Silver Champion, perhaps. That might um, not be enough. Yeah, I don't think it's enough, but also, True Silver is often a one of in this Paladin deck, so I don't know. Yeah, puts him down to two, and Eloise could clean up the board, but then she'd need True Silver Champion and her opponent to draw dead, which yeah. is not the case because he has a kill command following yeah. him. Yeah, right. So I think there's almost no chance outside of uh, some kind of very weird scenario like Lay on able hands. to kill your own Pilot Shredder into a. Vitality totem. What's the argument here for trading? I mean, I guess the Truce of Champion still kills him at 5, right? So it doesn't matter yeah, whether exactly. he gets the two kill command four. plus the hero power right, is still right. 5. A blessed champion would be lethal. Wow. Let it happen. You, you know the funny champion. thing is, BGH is... Well, it. first you have to, uh, you know, not disenchant it when you get it from right. a pack. Right. And, and then put it in your deck. And then show That's up the at a tournament. To That's a lot of steps, Chris. A lot of steps. I, I don't even... I can't even do it myself. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't really see any other out. I mean, even if she has like lay on hands, she'll still probably die. Uh, that I mean, I mean there's no shredder, way to kill off yeah. her own shredder to do something like vitality to him would be a way to try mm -hmm. to survive. But yeah, it's can't uh, optimist to say the least. And Cloud 9's up two one. Yeah, that's, pretty good position. That's a nice confidence booster for Ecop too. I mean, uh, yeah, you know, you don't want to go down zero two for your first game. Yeah, so, it feels bad, man. It feels Look bad, at man. this party downstairs. Oh, we have oh, a red everyone, over everyone there. getting out of their nerd hunch positions, <laughs> trying to straighten is their Trump backs. Trump sitting on Trump. What is that? Yeah, he is. Oh, no, man. he's laying. He's he has Trump W. Oh man, that Trump face. Trump. Oh god. Yeah, I can't oh, even. I can't, I can't even. Oh jeez. I have and Nogs of course, W. Dog is right there to stroke it for good luck. I should. I don't want. I don't want to see that. Anymore. No anymore. Okay, can we please not go back to the living room, please? Production, <laughs> if you're hearing this, like just never again. 
All right. Well, uh, the situation is Cloud Nine's got uh, twice as many points as uh, they do. Wow. They're literally twice as good right now. Twice the way, as good. the way you put it, it's yeah. Uh, uh, but uh, you know that warlock deck is still in it, and mm-hmm. there's still a lot of plays. It's gonna it's gonna come down to those last few decks, and if this warlock deck doesn't uh, doesn't get a decent run or a really good draw, then it could uh, lose to it, everything. It, it'll it might be one of those decks that's like, yeah, I don't want to play the warlock because it doesn't match up well. It just happens to be that last thing you have to win with, yeah, sure. and then it just doesn't win. I'm just like I'm just wondering if there's any variance on the druid mm. list because um, some people have been experimenting with you know ramp ish uh, like decks and maybe mm. cutting a copy of Savage War, a copy of Combo. Totally. What? Yeah, yeah. Some people have been trying out no. like a, a slower list, and I, I wonder if yeah, you could actually crazy. bring that ever to a to a tournament or if it's like mostly ladder specific because there's so much secret. Power. You might you might be browsing the competitive Hearthstone server a little too much because yeah. not every deck there is like the top end. Competitive like, Hearthstone. So people are like, oh yeah, this is like top ten legend. No, no, no. I'm no, like, not, you no, mean no, on the it's second not. day of the season. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah second yeah, day. Okay. Never mind. Yeah, gotcha. competitive Hearthstone is. I think the last time I saw a. Uh, a good druid without combo was when like Gara won Dreamhack. Yeah. Well, I mean, some some ramp druids are really defensive, and uh, some people were able to climb pretty effectively with it. But I think mm-hmm. the meta has to be very specific for ramp druid to be very. Yeah, in a conquest and, format like this, and this is also right? yeah, this is also a tournament right. format. So mm-hmm. I mean, the, the the combo is why druid is targeting some other classes. Mm-hmm. Um, so I mean I don't know. Yeah, do we pin it always on freeze mage or tempo mage? I feel like we've she's seen more mostly of a freeze mage. mage. Really, from Eloise as well? Haven't we? Yeah, uh, I think we've only really seen her play freeze mage. I think mm-hmm. hype was the one who brought mage a couple times and yeah. he played like mech mage or yeah, tempo right. mage. Yeah, he's the one who kept bringing up like variants on on the mage deck. Now the mech mage is is still considered a pretty good deck, mm-hmm. um, but I feel the the freeze mage does a really good job of countering like hard hard countering some of the decks out there, uh, especially paladin. It's just one yeah. of the very easy pickups. You almost can't lose that game. It's difficult though because you know Druid's still available, and mm-hmm. I guess Hunter is gone. But even then, it was it was face Hunter, so there was chances of that falling flat as well. And I think one thing to to be mindful of is the dynamic that Eloise, if she gets sent down, she loses again. She gets benched, then Tempo Storm gets cornered, uh, and if that's the case. Same thing with Hype, right? He can't lose two. So Gara might be the most likely to be sent. Yeah. So if we're Cloud9, maybe if you think that, you send what it's, whatever you think is best against Hunter. Glinto would make sense, I think. If you expect uh, the Hunter to come out, I mean, mm-hmm. Druid is kind of risky because mid-range Druid versus mid-range Hunter can be a little bit of a, a gamble where Zoo is almost an auto-loss depending on how the deck is built. And then sure. you've got Priest, which is obviously very consistent. Um, so Glinto would make sense probably, but yeah. Yeah. I think it's at this stage where... You still just send up your your best deck yeah. or whoever well, really wants to be playing. Looks like uh, hyped is going to be a double mind gaming C nine because if Priest was expected to come out, then hyped would be the reasonable mm-hmm. follow up where you play Patron against Dragon Priest. All right. Well, we do know it's Patron, but we don't know if it's Dragon Priest, and oh, I, I right. would I would expect really whatever from Kalento. Yeah. Um. I think I think picking just Deathlord Priest is still good. I think Classic Control Priest is still fine these days. Um, Dragon Priest, I think, is very popular, but I don't think uh, I don't think it's strong enough that you can assume that everyone is playing it when All you right. see Priest. So, what are you targeting if you bring uh, Control Priest to the tournament? I guess Zoo. Just ag- really aggressive decks. Yeah, you yeah. expect like um, high, uh, not high, but, but I, I, my guess would be that it's lower curve. It doesn't have Confessor Paladris. It would have like, I mean, Clento really liked the Light Banes, for example, and the right. Dragon Sisters. Yeah. Um, I wasn't sure if he was high on it. He even experimented with Divine Spirit, yeah. and it was very weird. I think he's he realized that that wasn't effective. But one thing is for sure, I'm pretty certain that it's going to be Dragon Priest. Um, he's told me he's liked the deck a lot. It fits more of his play style. He likes being more conservative, defensive, safe, make the absolute best plays. Huh? You have to play is. with minions, right? Like That's what he says a lot. The minion base Priest is definitely something Kalento's great at. Um, I don't think it's too great of a matchup against Patron War. I think it's all right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Twilight Garden's a pretty good card. Chill Maw can be very effective, but there's always the problem of uh, it being a little too slow sometimes to actually pressure. Because uh, mm-hmm. it, it takes some time to ramp up its actual yeah. attack. Like, Black Queen Corruptor takes a while to get going, and Azure Drake isn't even that good because you can just death bite both of these minions down. So there are chances where you just don't put enough pressure and your opponent kills you, and you don't you don't play Ysera expecting to win. Right, yeah. right. But uh, on on the flip side, I mean, you do have the board clears. Um, Holy Nova doesn't usually kill patrons, but the deck has a lot of spell power in it. Yeah. Light bomb as well sometimes yeah. can help. 
Um, however, uh, you know, if the warrior gets drawing good, like at a reasonable rate, there's sometimes almost nothing the priest can do. Interesting to note that Kalento has the Shrinkmeister and the Cabal Shadow Priest combination. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So uh, very favoring that kind of mid range control style. Yeah, I think I've seen him play this uh, just yesterday. He was uh, grinding the ladder with it. Oh, that's a pretty decent top deck if you want to play a Twilight Whelp. There's really no reason now that you picked up Isera to keep the dragon for activator purposes. Uh, well, it just doesn't do much, but it yeah. probably does less later on when patrons come into play. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, just, it's funny because, like, right. in, a, in a way, sometimes you'd rather have the Twilight Whelp be a 2-1 as opposed to a 2-3 because it survives less whirlwinds, yeah. survives less patrons, stuff, like, if you get buffs on it. Um, so there, there is a case where, like, if you throw out the Twilight Whelp, it doesn't matter if it's a 2-1 or a 2-3, it's going to get Fiery War Axe. Yeah. So yeah. in this case, that buff is actually sometimes hard because it tells more about your hand. Yeah, but if, if it is a 2-1, it can die to things like Armor Smith. That, I mean, do, do you really want to burn a Shrink Meister to deal 2 damage with, like, an Acolyte or an Armor Smith? Not really. so wasted. You're going to want to steal other yeah. really valuable things. One thing that also is somewhat cool is the weird scenarios where you can use, like, Cabal Shadow Priest on things like the uh, Warsong Commander, like stealing the Warsong Commander and doing some fun stuff with your own minions. All right, well, it looks like the Acolyte's going to come down. It's going to be pretty sad here to get Shadow Word Pain. Yeah, it's a pretty good target, though. I mean, you still want to Cabal Shadow Priest the Armorsmith later on if you don't want them to stack too much armor. It's never a too bad target. Um, wow, double Shrink Meister from Kalento. A single yeah, one I've Shrink seen, Meisters. but double is a... That's really interesting. Yeah. So he must have... He must not be satisfied with only two two drops. The right. Wormrest Agent is the only two drop normally in the Priest. Um, assuming that you have other mana cost spells like the Power Word sh- or sh- sh- the Shadow Word Pain. But the, uh, the Shrink Meisters improves its early game consistency. Yeah, this looks like a very Sweet. minion heavy Priest right. deck. Very heavy minion. Like, this is. I mean, Shrink Meister being kind of mixed in with dragons. I mean, the amount of cuts he must have made on the I think, spell front, Nova. I think the typical because, list kind of runs one. Um, one Shrink? Yeah, I think you run one Shrink and one Pain just okay. to have a little With bit of one flexibility. As well and... Yeah, they're just they're just effective cards um, that you can use in, in situations very flexibly, and it seems okay. Yeah. Um, I, don't, I don't know if we can assume much more craziness than we already see in his hand. Yeah. Just because there's not a lot of room in this deck. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you do play like the double shrink meister, if you do play Cabal, if you do play maybe one other card, you probably are cutting maybe a Holy Nova. Yeah, I guess there's, there might be an argument as well against Control Warrior, which tend to play Sarah in their deck now, where you having the shrink meister against them is pretty But sweet. that feels bad. Wow, yeah. that tempo uh, double shrink. Yeah, he can't avoid the Acolyte drawing multiple cards. He's really afraid of the Death Spite, so he's just going to try to do what he should do, which is load up the board and out-pressure the Warrior. But that's not it's not too bad of an idea, because there are no weapons from Hyped. He already inferred this um, from the lack of removal in the past couple turns. The thing is, if it was a Death Spite, it, it wouldn't really matter. The Acolyte would still only draw two cards. It's true. All right, so still no kill on anything. Just keep the drawing cards. He's um, gonna hap- He's gonna run into the Twilight Whelp, right? So that way you can draw. Yeah, I'd imagine. I mean, there's no reason to just lose the Acolyte right now. If you're looking to draw cards, why, why wouldn't he do that first? Um, maybe he didn't want to play anything else. I mean, would he have played a War Axe if he found it? Probably, or does he want to load? No, he, he may have been looking for an inner rage to get rid of a three-two. Ah, makes sense. I think that's a good. I think that's a good call. Oh, two dark cultists. Yeah, very board centric. You know what? What if you just cut some of those early game spells that are very board? No, that's oriented? probably it. Yeah, Maybe that's one what I think. chosen instead. Makes sense actually. If you could play a double cult, like one cultist yeah. instead. Because he's got health buffs anyways for the dark cultists. He better just go board control. Yeah. Well, um, oh, uh, there's the inner age. No weapons though, because those are the most important cards against priests. I mean, you want to mm-hmm. highlight some of the value in patron and frothing, but without weapons against priests, warrior does nothing, and it looks like there's a chance that hype simply can't find any. Yeah, but he's still okay. Like he, right. he can draw. He can just go to ten if he wants this turn. Yeah, the shield slam as well from hype. Uh, I heard him mention how he didn't like it too much. Like yesterday, he was game. discussing it. He was like, it's "I don't like uh, shield slam and patron," and suddenly he's there just it running is. it. Yeah, I've tried to. Yeah, he doesn't like it. He loves it. He loves I'm it. Yeah. I'm still trying to figure out what the play here is. Um, 
you can't draw two cards and play nothing, so you shield might slam, you might right? play frothing or just shield slam. Yeah. So you so you attack battle rage to ten and then armor up shield slam the other three two. I could see that. I mean, you can't use uh, the shield slam with the uh, shield block. Oh, slam. No, you, can't, you can't play the slam. You have ten yeah. cards right now. Well, you get slammed to three two and just pass. Yeah. But I mean, if he wants to capitalize on shield slam later because he has shield block, mm -hmm. but uh, I guess that's what you can use execute for. I mean, the whole point is that you're not really afraid of the big threats um, until you get to the very late stage of the game. Do you steal this just because you can steal it? I think you want to steal yeah. it. No, I think there's you want... no brawl, right? So. Don't you want to steal a Warsong Commander though? You generally yeah, do, yeah. but I think it's one of those scenarios where you're just trying to go for board tempo as much as possible, and the other mm -hmm. alternatives float mana. Wow, no weapons yet for hypes. That's I mean, a lot of cards. It's like a lot of stuff that happens. Yeah, he's able to to clear a few more creatures, but, but doing so is really bad because he's got to use inner ages. Yeah, if he, if he drew Emperor Thorsen, that would have been insane. I think it would have been one of those like, oh my god, maybe it's just game over because he had two with the ghoul, robbings, yeah. uh with the a ghoul. stable ghoul and a, a war song commander, yeah, and, and a grim patient zone. and double inner rage, you know, <laughs> casually just uh, extra damage. Um, well, so that might be the plan. It might the plan might be just to like cycle. To yeah, it might be shield control. block time. I think. Yeah. You could play like yeah, I don't know. I was gonna say like frothing with an inner rage. Oh, it's gonna be a hype play. It's gonna be like something completely different. Okay. Yeah. It's gonna be like double inner rage. Slam double inner rage. Double inner rage. Look for a whirlwind or find emperor. Oh. Oh, interesting. So now you can execute. The, uh, well, that's got to hurt the boss shadow priest. Or uh, uh, oh, 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 why did you do the execute? So he's keeping this for the patron combo that he knows he's getting two turns on the line. He just right. needs to survive until no, 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 no. Hype, right? hype, just shaking his head. No, he just realized he misplayed. He drew okay. the execute and it threw him off. His other play was better with the yeah, inner rage course. because it pumped the the frothing the five attack and actually trading for the four five. Yeah. yeah. But with this play, it just it just dies for free. And in this case, Kalento's even going to draw cards. You're also of it. you're also going to need execute more often. Twilight Guardian. Yeah. I think he might have misclicked as well. There's one of these weird scenarios where the cards just they, at they the end shift. of the rope. Yeah. yeah. When you play, when you cycle, it just like shifts. Yeah. And then like you try to grab it, and sometimes you grab the wrong card. Yeah. I have Twisting Nether and empty boards. Uh, yeah, if you, if you like draw very quickly, right? Especially ten, with... ten cards, maybe intentionally. I don't know. It's like oh, okay. it's really sad. <laughs> I don't know if it was that exact card, but I've done like complete wastes. Alright, well, Kalanta realizes like Hype is in panic mode, he's gonna play the most stuff he can. Yeah, if he's I mean, executing a 2 1. Despite all of this, there's still a reasonable chance Hype can win. It's yeah. not like impossible, but it's like starting to dwindle pretty significantly. Yeah. Shield, the double shield block is gonna carry. It's just one more turn, but yeah. he needs more than one more turn right now. Yeah, he needs to shield, double shield block into like Emperor Thorson into something. I think he needs to double shield block into the other execute. Oh, that's not a bad card to pick up. I mean, you've got the war song. He needs execute here. Yeah. The, the the first execute would have been useful on the Cabal Shadow. No, right Cabal would have just been dead. Yeah. You just have execute. Yeah. <laughs> yep. But yep. then you wouldn't have the inner range. Yeah. I know. I'm just like I'm just I'm stating the All facts right. here, Crip. All right. <laughs> that's what we do. Right. That's what we do in court before right. we declare someone guilty. Mm -hmm. Okay. At so least in America. You're guilty, Crip. The system of true justice. Oh, hello. A little right. late, but I mean, there's always a. Is, is there a way for him to actually? No, I, I think I think this is the play because you realize you need two turns. So he's thinking he probably needs value off of his hero power yeah. to actually get two turns through armor. That makes sense. I mean, you're you're getting an extra four instead mm -hmm. of just getting the two shield blocks now and only two on the following turn. Um, well, that's a lot of damage coming from the Ooh. priest. Double Valence chosen. You know, that's not the cut yeah. he made for them. No, I mean, you, you, you would, you would, you would make that cut if you had this many minions, though, right? Yeah, that's true. Probably not. Especially with a lot of early game minions. Mm -hmm. This no. is too much damage. Oh, whirlwind. Uh, uh, War song and uh, Clento wisely buffed the Northshire cleric so that Grim Patron can't do anything. Uh, is there a play here? I think there is. It's terrible though, but I think it's something like War Song Ghoul Double Whirlwind. Maybe. Um. Yeah, you've got a point. I mean, that might buy you 
the time you need. Oh my god. Is it? No, I actually think yeah, you're still dead. Think you're you still can't dead armor up. You can't, yeah, you can't actually armor up when you're taking an extra... Can you shield block, draw, execute, and then save you? Um, would that save you? Maybe you would go up to 15, 15. no, 13, because you need a death by something. And you don't need to death by anything. No, I think that would save you. Uh, it's no, because the death, the will failure shows on the other end would kill you. Okay, but as far as as far as he sees, yeah. Brawl. Yeah. Nope, not quite what he's looking for. He just plays two. Uh, Wait, stable you, you whirlwind, whirl, you whirlwind, you whirlwind and double ghoul, right? If you play t an unstable ghoul, is that enough to live? Just a single one. Eight. No, there's no, no absolutely, there's, there's there's absolutely no way. There's absolutely no way. Yeah, absolutely no way. Oh wow, there's, there's there's certainly not. really absolutely no yeah. way here. <laughs> no, it's uh, officially over. Do you go yeah. for the BM? Is this the Calento first? BM or is he <laughs> yeah. just thinking about what he wants for lunch? Yeah, probably more of that Chick Fil A that we got in the morning. Cause that was pretty clutch. All right. Okay. Okay. That was that was such a good uh, good jokes. All right. Well. Hype fails to win with Patron again. Yeah, does that, I think he means benched. Uh, no, I don't believe so. I think Eloise played prior to him with but, the secret. Are you sh I thought you had if you just lose twice before winning. Uh, I thought it was you had to lose twice in a row, so you send somebody out. Yeah, to, uh, I think, I think right. you have to lose twice in a row. Yeah, okay, gotcha. but it's not that punishing. That would just be, uh, I mean, Tim Celestial would have been 0-9. Mm -hmm. Like, it would have been way too bad. Yeah. 0 9? Yeah, it would have been like they would have managed to get two more losses. <laughs> that really. right. Wow. <laughs> Uh, that's that's pretty all cool. right, all right. So uh, take it. Oh, they're not here. We can make fun of the mics, right? Yeah, right. Works. Okay. I'll do I'll it later. All right. PR. E cup. You have two check marks on one player too early. Yeah, uh, it's like it's it's better if it was one point for each player. Is what I'm saying. Right. But look at the match. And with, with one, some right? of the decks maybe having an issue with uh, with some win conditions as we talked about, I, I kind of certainly ahead. But yeah, it's uh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's it's very far from over right now. Druid is a, is a fine play. Like Strife Pro Druid and Paladin are fine, but the Zoo I still like. If it is Freeze Mage from Eloise, it makes the entire thing even worse. It's um, just still only one game, though. Yeah. Um, well, the, the challenge the freeze, here is someone ev with everything. Yeah. The phrase is going to beat the Paladin as well. I mean, it's, right. You can't lose that. Yeah. You re yeah, you really can't I lose. Don't. You have I, to try. I, I you have to, like, the Paladin has to get incredibly lucky, yeah. and you have to basically only get card draw with the freeze mage. Well, yeah, you have to play like Thais did in the last game, where you just drew like, you know, three out of 11 cards that didn't win the game. Okay. Where the eight other ones did. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I guess it can happen, but it's really, really rare. Um, Do you think uh, the X...
off of like your your secrets. Yeah, because they always get negated immediately. All right, but her deck is like a bit slower. She's not going to run out of cards. Yeah, that's fair. I think it's a good matchup against the Druid. I think it's a good matchup against the Zulok. I think uh, it's probably a bad matchup against the Paladin because I think in those like hyper. Secret Pally versus Secret Pally matches, the slightly faster one tends to win. Yeah. And her deck is pretty slow. Sure. That is, is also is it, is it that slow? Well. We haven't seen like Shredders and Belchers. We, and... we exactly saw Shredder. Yeah. Oh, no, we didn't see that. Oh, that's right. We didn't see like the Doctor, but we saw Shredder. Yeah. yeah. But Shredder is slow for that yeah, deck, I think. For that deck. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. I mean, I think most lists nowadays play mid range, uh, mid range style. Um, I just don't know. tend to spread it's, it out. It's, it's flipped. For me, in my mind, there's no most of anything. Like really, yeah. I've seen mostly mid range, so I guess maybe. I don't know. Like a... ev- every second day, I see like a completely new secret pally list. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, the head to head, as you said, um, if Five Crow's playing more of an aggressive one, we saw Kalento played in Starlight or a very aggressive pally. Mm-hmm. Uh, so maybe that's what Strife Crow brought. All right. Um, yeah, I think I think Strife Crow, even though he's played mid range pally a lot, I think uh, it's more risky to play that. But Strifegrow has been like he's he's been sticking to his guns in a lot of these in the past. So yeah, I, I would I actually wouldn't put it past them to run yeah. a mid range pally here. I think Cloud9 has been one of the least experimental teams mm-hmm. in team phase. Well, like Tempestorm was the most I think they yeah. brought like all kinds of different Absolutely. decks. Absolutely, and then Cloud9 seemed to just pick the same kind of decks every single week. Like Ecop would generally pick Zoo, and then Kalento would usually bring like Patron, or he'd bring maybe Rogue, or in this case Priest. And Shrifeco would always bring Paladin for some reason and always be like mid-range Paladin, he'd win. Yeah, but I think it's still yeah, not a bad deck. Pretty well yeah, it. it was pretty good. Yeah, it got an improvement, I guess, with Murloc Knight, if you want to play that card mm-hmm. in mid-range. So you could still, yeah. I guess, run the deck and do well. I don't, I don't think he actually did exceptional with Paladin, but I think people just expected him to lose because yeah. at the time Paladin was like that 7th, 8th class type right. of area. So the fact that he made it work. Oh, looks like it could be uh, either a very polarized... I mean, it could be no, it's, straight it's, it's, up mid range. It's, yeah, it's, it's also it's also just very possible it's secret pally here. Yeah, Cog Hammer it, is still it is secret pally. Yeah. Um, Do you play silence though in secret pally? You can play silence in secret pally if you uh, don't play divine favor. And um, mm. I mean, the bottom is Eloise's hand, isn't it? No, no it's the, right bo- the top. Oh, my mistake. Right. Okay, Eloise. you're right. You're right. Cog Consecration is also a big deal too, especially in retaliation and muster. Oh, equality. Okay, yeah, he's, this is a mid range. He's playing mid range. I like mid range against secrets. I think it's actually possibly better even uh, than a secret head to head. I don't know. Because you, you do run the AOE, Pens. you do have the Aldor for the Mister Challenger. You're gonna get a lot of the big, uh, the big swing turns where they get an unmanageable mm-hmm. minion. One thing that will be nice is if like Blessing of Kings or Avenge does land and he has a silence for it. But the problem is he doesn't like he doesn't have mini bots. So he's yeah. basically behind on board from this point on. And that's a really scary thing against a much quicker paladin that already has things like consecration to immediately answer your muster for battle. Yeah. The, this consecration from Meloise is going to play a big role, I think, in just stabilizing the board. Well she has her own muster for battle too. That's yeah. even better. Because she's gonna have board. No, that, that's what answers anything he plays. Like stri- there is there's nothing that Strapper can play that sticks on the board. Yep. So he plays the owl here just to make oh, sure that's that he can... painful. It's the most aggressive play, but it yeah. still gets punished. Yeah, because the muster is very strong. Uh oh. No, I, I think the muster is just it. Mm-hmm. Um, you can haunt a creep. Shredder and then turn five Mysterious Challenger. That's pretty scary um, if yeah. you want to strike perspective once that falls.
reporting for duty. Three interface. That's true. And then this forced the true silver that gives her the It seems to, to make sense. I mean, it Pretty also smart. gives like a lot of weaving in of uh, dudes in the future if she wants. Mm -hmm. I wonder. Must move quickly. Also, okay. it's more painful because every single minion that gets played is, you know, except for the anti. Act redemption. If Avenge lands onto the. There's so many juggles here that you have no idea. That's yeah. true. Like, well, you like get the juggle off of that. No, it's gonna. You're right. Regular seen some stuff, man. It's been through <laughs> quality, it's got right. Peacekeeper, it got buff from the competitive spirit. Yeah. It's in communism, right? Yeah. Communism, yeah. It's it's been a rough life. Yeah. Poor guy. I'm just trying to make a little bit of a I think I can do it again. Just to give just peacekeeper the juggle one more time. Yeah, I mean, just for, for yeah. just for old time's sake. It's a one two double piece keep juggling <laughs> after equality and competitive. And you just spirit. silence it to end everything. Oh man. And it's back to blood and oh, That needed to be consecration, I think. Yeah. I, I I just feel uh, no. It needs to be a doomsayer. No, I'm, I mean he needed to draw a consecration. He I was... think he needed to choose over last turn. And that was really the end. The end of that. I think well, he's going for doomsayer right now. 
No, oh, he's no. going for the slow play once more. Is he dead? Okay. There's no. A six, seven, no, I don't eight. think he is. Uh, there's a... Okay, he's dead. Uh, he can't play concentration. He can't play concentration, so he's still alive, technically. Five, is seven, he? eleven. Yeah. He's a he's one 11. off. I think. One off. Maybe I'm bad at math. I'm probably bad no. At math. I, I think he, no. He has, right. he has more than that. He's. I think he's eleven right now. And so if he has, if uh, she has eleven, excuse me, uh, Eloise can choose over twice. But then the antique heal bot does that save Strife Grove? He's gonna need an antique heal bot plus something mm -hmm. else. Um, Scar Cog hammer, fire. maybe. Cog hammer could be very useful. Yeah, that's a that's a that's a good point. But then. If Eloise sets up the redemption and noble sacrifice, is that no? Nah, that's not really that significant for the redemption. You can you kind of ignore might as one them. one. Yeah, she's just gonna try to maximize the life justice damage. You might as well, right? Since you've got your server. I mean, it depends. Yeah, how you look at this. The, the only way she, like Eloise could have lethal is if she somehow had shredder pops like until like flame don't kill him. I don't even know. But he, maybe not even then. Oh so. yeah, shredder positioning. How did we not just harp on it like we usually do? I was just, it's just less likely that okay. it'll work, right? Yeah. yeah. It's less bad now with yeah. GTA. Yeah, it's, it's definitely more... Ooh. I mean... Wow! That changes nothing. It basically it? resets the turn. Yeah. No, he gets another turn and he is more likely to draw into a board clear, which is the only way he has any chance in this game. Lehan's 8, right? So he goes to 14. Yeah, 14 health. And he's still uh, above three, lethal, I think. 6, 8, what? 12... No, the no, Consecration steals him, he's dead. Yeah, Consec kills him. Mm. It's Doomsayer, boys. Yeah. No, he can't. It's a noble sack. Oh, you're right. A noble sacrifice. <laughs> I mean, that was. It's that good was that there's three of us here. That's, yeah, I mean, there's you. too many. No, nobody <laughs> sees the full picture. Right? <laughs> One hard. at a time. Yeah. Right? yeah. I'm still just working on part. Of it. Yeah. The, the. I think that's it, right? Shrefko can't. Oh no, no, he he heals from the true silver if he attacks. No, but he but takes the, the damage back. He noble takes sacrifice. the two from the yeah, noble, noble sacrifice. sacrifice. Oh, hello, Consec. No, wow, that's, that's pretty unfortunate. Consecration was just two cards off. Yeah. Well, Oh no, he's probably just gonna have to lose that. So he's gonna hope no consecration. Yeah, definitely no consecration, no no damage. The fact that he didn't attack way. though also had a lot of inherent risks. Like, what is this competitive spirit? But yeah. I think he realizes I die anyways. Competitive spirit. Yeah. And and avenge, so I can't clear any minion. So in this case, I just better hold because like three out of the, the four possible secrets it would be just kill. Yeah, yeah, but if, if you want to play super defensively, then you just attack face because that only triggers uh, noble, noble sack, noble sack and it's, it's a neutral. Effect. Unless it's eye for nine, then you take four damage to yourself. <laughs> yeah, but, but, then, but then you end up on YouTube, right? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's I a, guess so. You, yeah, you have immortality. Exactly. Yeah. And you get a raise because it's smart. I have a lot. Of I knew eye for nine was a good one. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. The first yeah. time it got major value. Even though realistically it would have been dead either way. Yeah. Almost any secret there was. So are the games boring? Or are these people just bored? Huh? No, they're, they're on a 10 minute delay. They're still watching. Oh, they're still watching the stream. Yeah, they're still yeah, watching the beginning of that game. Also, most of the things in that room are just way too comfortable to care about anything yeah, else. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. There's like two love sacks and a bunch of lazy boy chairs. So love sacks. Yeah, yeah that's it's what they're that called. Big it's that big brand of bag that you just bag. lay in. I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah. Called love Th sacks. Thanks for, uh, thanks for yeah. enlightening me. All right. Um, moving on, so Cloud Nine's got three two. I mean, mm -hmm. he's got a one point yeah. five. A very big win. Well, this, this this is where things can go extremely badly for right. Cloud Nine because I, again, another really big information uh, reveal on Cloud Nine's part. It's just a straight up mid range paladin. It's it's not just that. It's it's right now the bench rule is in full yeah. swing. They can't because if Strife Crow oh, plays again and right. loses, then Ecop is stuck on Warlock. Yeah, and then which you means that you just Warlock. give two points to Tempo Storm, right? I mean, you just avoid playing Druid, and then you just, like, you you, you kill Ecop twice, yeah. and then... But mid-range Pally with Patron as Wait. well, you know, that's also a big problem for them. How, how does that work? So if uh, if Shafka loses here again, and then Ecop loses twice in a row, Temple Storm's on five, and there's two players benched, and Kalento, Kalento can't play anymore. So then does Ecop keep playing? Or You know, that's a great question. Play? I'm guessing they just... Maybe they just, like, bring Kalento out, and they just, like, push Ecop and they could go aside, and Kalento just plays every deck. And he plays so, the yeah. zoo, right? Like, he mm -hmm. takes all the decks, and he piles yeah. them as he wants. Yeah. yeah, move over Scrubs. It's Kalento time. <laughs> yeah. The double check mark kind of... <laughs> uh, I mean, for that. realistically, Cloud Nine's still leading. They still, they still can be in a decent. It's spot. Just they're, they're in a really bad spot technically. Yeah, in terms of the bench rule. So, do you send Ecop here now out of fear of the bench rule? Well, I think you do. Might as well. I mean, you're going to lose. The risk is so bench, high right? yeah. if, if Strife Crow plays and loses. I mean, also, I think you're pretty happy to see that it's mid range Paladin too. So now, like, 
that Patron Warrior has even a bigger chance. Here. Right. So I think, like, Hype just took Q's Patron Warrior again, I think. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it should be fine. No, the only bad matchup ish is maybe Druid, and that would have to be like That's, maybe Zoo sometimes yeah, can actually get out of hand sometimes. You're right. It's it's definitely the hardest matchup on paper yeah. based off what you see there. So I think that could be like if, if the worst is like 50 50, then mm-hmm. I think it's a pretty good chance. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Somebody says that uh, Tempo Eloise is looking very serious playing. She looked tired more so than serious. It's, it's a lot of money on the line, too. I think, right. um, you know, th- there's a lot of pressure for players who are also remote because they're like not with the team, so they have to communicate on, like on yeah, Skype. And can and it's not like very reliable and you're in a different time zone so you're tired just you, know, yeah. you don't have the support of right. everyone here at the house all right, all right. Uh, regardless of uh, who picks what there's just a lot riding on the next match here on well, next yeah. game this could is. be a turning point yeah. yeah it probably is going to be actually like just even if uh, ecop ends up you know losing with zoo or eqing zoo yeah. oh my so th- this makes a lot of sense it's one of those things where like this is the high risk though yeah so like cloud nine re- recognizes that yeah. they might bring the best chance of which is warrior uh, the patient warrior and then they try to bring their best deck against that so yeah. so basically Tempo Storm went to the next level of guessing that they would avoid the bench, and then Cloud9 went to the next level of like, let's pick the best class against what they yeah. would interpret the best class is. So Cloud9's kind of ahead of the, the mind games, but it doesn't mean they're going to necessarily be ahead of the yeah, entire matchup. They're, they're, if they right. lose this, it's going they're to be They're ahead in the game, game, but the, the yeah. weight in losing is just enormous. Yeah, let's hope yeah. Uh, Hype doesn't feel too uh, affected, I guess, by that play that he made earlier, which we highlighted. I don't even know if it was a misplay still to this point. We assume yes, because he seemed to be a little angry uh, or disappointed. In the, I, in the I, think, I think I think it's pretty, pretty real as it was yeah. a misplay. Let's just hope it doesn't affect him. I think he's a pretty composed player yep. in general. Yep. I mean, with the way that he plays, he takes very strange lines of play. Um, but there's there's a reason why he's yeah. on a team playing for a lot of money right now. It's because usually those strange line of planes um, overall lead to more victories. Yeah. So I mean, it, it it is what it is. Sometimes it fails. <laughs> That's just one of those times. Yeah, and uh, hype did have the second highest win rate in the regular season. He was right behind Brian Kibler, and it came down yeah. to the last day of the regular season where they played Value Town, mm-hmm. and uh, hype dropped a couple games. Kibler got his games in. So Hype performed very well during the regular season, uh, as well as Chalky, I believe. I think those are the top three. Yeah, players. Chalky yeah. was was up there, but they, he since he didn't make through, you know, even if he had the uh, the best score, he still wouldn't have been able to get matchup duels. So they're not just aspiring. So Savage Combatant, um, I assume a lot of lists now run a one of. I haven't seen too many decks run two of them. Um, the Savage. Yeah, Savage Combatant. Mm-hmm. Have you seen much of it? I uh, actually I have not seen much right. Druid when I played on ladder. Really? Yeah. Okay. Really. Yeah. I've hit a lot of druids, but um, that's just because I've had to control. I had to be playing control warrior. Right. And <laughs> oh, I see. the Blizzard employee sees, oh, Frodan's killing yeah. control warrior. Let's have him hit a bunch of the druids. Every yeah. single druid. Whoa, flame juggler. Yeah. Okay. There we so go, secret paladin. One, I think one of the first, one huh. of the first uh, types of druid that we've seen. I think Nimsh played was like, flame oh, juggler yes, druid with jung- like druid of the saber and yeah. everything. That was yeah. like the craziest. And I think people try the car and realize it's actually not that bad. It's it's kind of like the knife juggler for decks that don't actually have creatures. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think the way to look at flame juggler is not through a knife juggler lens of like the random damage, but to think about it as early game board control for a deck mm-hmm. that doesn't that it doesn't necessarily excel in it and you definitely need that early game board so because it does a little bit of board impact and two three so it stays alive generally speaking against the one drops so So it's 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 a really effective board control card and this is something that talked with strapco for a little bit he was like he doesn't understand why people call it that fiery war x yeah i was gonna say like uh, (laughs) good job from strapco playing like you know around the fire wax by not going for donasus aspiring and maybe getting punished and not ramping yeah. Um, but there was no war act. He would have been really rewarded by this if Hive didn't just get it. Or Nasus Aspirin coming out. Oh! oh. Well, that's uh. So literally just the eye roll. So just Divine Shield. He yeah. killed the Divine Shield. With it. That's 12 damage from the Pilot Shredder. It is, but the damage is not that relevant because usually the uh, the warrior can uh, win before the druid. Sure. Yeah, and the flame Juggler is maybe a liability sometime in the mid game. Do you ever just play it now for the one damage phase? I mean, against Patron, I don't well, think I'd Why like... is it such a risk to play the Darnassus uh, Aspirant? Because you deal so much more damage. I mean, because he's going to kill the Darnassus and leave the Succubus alone? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do more damage. Right. I mean, there's no drawback, really. It's all yeah. about whether or not you're afraid of that ping just going wrong in an Acolyte of Pain, or... Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
Well, he does have the Inner Rage and the Grim Patron, but no Whirlwind Effect on that turn. So Hyped has to evaluate and balance if he wants to use the coin here for, like, no Mission Venture. Um, and if he doesn't, then what does he do as a as a? He can just play the ghoul. It's weak to keeper though. If you go for coin gnomish, you the, can... the ghoul just stops your damage and takes away maybe some tempo from the hero power. Cool, that's pretty good. Yeah, it makes sense. The tempo removal I think is a good point. I like keeping the coin though, just for options for the grim patron. Oh hey, combos in hand. Mm -hmm. All yeah, Dr. Boom well, in the but combo. The, the idea here is also that if um, if Strafkrow was unwilling to remove it with his hero power, then he would get another grim patron. Right. Oh, you're right. You're yeah. right. That's a good point. Alright, so the Aspirant's still not contested. Um, oh, I think I think Gnomish comes down here. Because I think if you coin in a Rage Grim Patron, there's a high likelihood your opponent can just deal with it because it's a 5 2 and a 3 yeah. 3. Yeah, it's probably not good enough at this stage. Now oh. it's also getting somewhat Whoa. scary because. Oh, you're taking a lot of damage as warrior though. Like yeah, how do you stop this damage? Two, inner, two savage wars is that like game? Uh, I think we'll it is. Looking at yeah, an extra. 12. Well, I think yeah, hype, that'd be lethal. Actually, hype, hype is thinking world. about uh, inner raging the flame juggler right now. So that would wow. that would deny that. Yeah, that'd be a legitimate thing to do. But then, what does Druga and Omi do on six? Also, that might give something problematic. Because if you kill off the flame juggler, you also keep the Nomish Adventure alive. Which is really nice. I mean, even Druid of the Claw charging here would be an issue, right? Like, that's another 4. They don't even have to, like, use Savage War with it. They can just punch in the face for 4 and have another minion you can't handle. Well, he's going to want to drop Thor's in next turn, so that way he has stuff the following turn. So he has to evaluate taking this damage from the Flame Juggers worth it. I don't think so. I think you've got enough in your hand here. All right. Oh. Oh. Is it that deck? What, was that was that enough to lethal <laughs> with Savage War? That would have been 6 plus 8. Yeah, six plus eight. Nope, it's not 14. quite. Not quite. But still, that's yeah. That's basically enough when you have Doctor Boom and Force Nature to follow. I mean, without a ghoul, this three to its stealth is the thing probably... is like I love Doctor Boom so much. And when I see Grim Patron, it's like my, I feel safe, <laughs> right? Because <laughs> they they play their Patron right. combo, and it, it's always that first Patron that dies. Yeah, oh. or or the War Song. You're like, oh, I'm sorry, yeah. it's not happening. <sighs> if it happens later in the game, it's kind of. Uh... What's what's also a little bit frightening too is if he, if these Darnassus Aspirant dies, then Doctor Boom doesn't come down next turn. Mm -hmm. So Shrive Crow is maybe thinking about taking out the no oh, well, Force of Nature. Um, the the Gnomish Inventor? Could be, it's a possibility. I mean, I like pushing damage just because you already have the combo just, set You just up, Savage Roar here, it's not too bad. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're pushing yeah. for Savage Roar damage. If you want to kill that 2-4, you can with the 2-1. Two, the two yeah, I think this is so that he can ensure Dr. Boom next turn. Right. I like this play. I really like it. So we, we're assuming basically that Dr. Boom plus the Force of Nature should be enough to right. carry through. And I think this won't stop Hype from playing Thorson. And then Shrefko plays Boom, and then we're going to see if the good old Grim Patron shenanigans can, can carry it home. It seems like the pressure of Shrefko really put too much of a clock on Hype. Yeah. I think Hype is, again, like one or two turns away from actually catching up. I think uh, the Pilot Shredder drop might have helped a lot. To right, get the 4-3, the that's another uh, really huge amount of damage. Wait, that's a lot more damage as well. That's not enough mana to play everything. I think he's still Dr. Boom. Yeah. Well, it's Twitch chat lethal at least, right? The yeah, the boom is better, but you can't even do these two spells over the next two turns anyways. So like like reasonably your opponent will be able to armor up and get out of range. Like you have to swipe hero power in I don't, terms of nature hero power. I don't think you know how boom bots work. <laughs> oh, I'm saying I'm saying <laughs> if, if, if was to go for spells lethal, yeah. I don't think he'd, he'd be reasonable. Alright, well um Now the question is, how does Strive Cruel lose? Oh, it just Wars on Commander, yeah. Grim Patron, it's very the, lucky bombs. The bombs hit the patrons for one damage. That's yeah. how this. But no, like he almost. Yeah, I guess they would have to kill, kill everything. Oh, I thought I thought you killed the two three first. Why not? Why wouldn't you kill the two three first? Some more patrons. Oh wow, uh, that's very good for him. Yeah, because now he can kill. Uh, I think he's going to use the last patron. <laughs> oh, he's trying to spawn as few patrons as possible, so they they're on they're on one health after the two three. Kind health. of. Now he needs this to not. He didn't kill uh, Thorson. It needs to not kill the war song as well. Oh, oh my god! This... And that's gonna allow him a full board clear. That is so huge. This is completely insane. 
Can Strife Crew take this though? I mean, I think Force of Nature Hero Power into Swipe is a lethal no matter what. But there might be a, like a battle rage into shield blocks because right. we've seen two earlier. But now he can't clear the the board. Like the swipe is he so has bad. Yeah, he has battle rage to, to draw so many cards. Right, he might find a like he might find a shield block here. <laughs> oh. I guess you oh, did no. know how boombots work. <laughs> yeah, oh, that one. Oh, no. oh, that's how my boombots work. Is, <laughs> is it? You, yeah, that's not how mine work. <laughs> I just played Doctor Boom and the Patriots dead. Yeah. Might as well concede. Because oh. that boombot, if it hit face enough, that was lethal. Yeah, yeah. right. It, it hit been. three damage to face. Mm -hmm. That was it. Lethal. Yeah. Well, Strife Crow can clear a few of these patrons. Oh my. Do goodness. you even? I mean, I think Force of Nature to face and to swipe is like your your best bet because you can always swipe Hero Power and hope you win. Um. I don't very much see a way to clear and win. What Actually, if, next time you have Force of Nature plus and Power of the Wild, the wild yeah, do you hold on to it? Like, what if you just swipe face? Swiping facing now. Yeah. Did you I, do that? I would do that. But you know, you know Hype plays two shield blocks. So he battle rages. He gets like so many cards. And he's going to definitely Yeah, but you, you, can't, you can't die to, to anything. Hype's had to kill us off his own creatures. Oh, man. Is this a swipe on the face? It I is. want it to be. It is. He's going to try to do nine damage next turn. And if Hype draws one battle rate or one shield block, he's out of range. If he doesn't find a shield wait, block, and it's why? Next. Why did he kill the girl patron then? Um, he wanted. Wait, yeah, yeah, he created more patrons, right? This one? Yes. Yeah, to flood the There would have been so one no patron frothing. less, and he so There's did... no frothing, I think. No, but. Oh, so there's no. Okay. Yeah, because yeah, you can't play frothing and then die. You'd have to kill off your own creature, is what I was right. saying. Okay. So, Hype might actually slam his own patron just for an extra battle rage draw so he can get shield block i think so the th like, well, you might want to start yeah thing is like if how many shield blocks do you expect to get wait what? i think he has uh oh, i think ours. he has lethal but does he have lethal I think so. oh because we're not counting how much damage right. he has <laughs> yeah we're, we're like, like does he have shield block <laughs> he uh, might just win through yeah. this point never mind one. patron is fine it still works right it still kills people yeah 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 wow what a game Absolutely crazy. The lines of play these players took were absolutely, <laughs> like, I wouldn't say flawless, but based on the circumstances, it looked like none of them Man. made a mistake. Um, what a tough game for Shrefko to swallow, too. That means he's yeah. benched. Yeah. Uh, that means Ecop has, has to play, play the Zoom Warlock. Warlock. Uh, I think it it's tougher for Ecop. Tempo Storm has the perfect deck to kill, they can get a 4 3 lead, even though being down 3 Well, I think they do. I think Eloise is playing Freeze Mage, just as he has like, yeah, the whole probably. season. I mean, I, I, I don't know. I, I, all, all I know was every single member of Tempo Storm came to me today. Except Gara, and so that they're not sure about their decks. Okay. Okay. So they're like, they're like, I'm not sure if they'll do well today. So, so that's a little. Uh, yeah. You get some inside information about their insecurities. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Too much irony that Do that Strife Girl was one of the the pioneers to introduce Doctor Boom to us, and today he's been failed him, betrayed, betrayed. He's been betrayed. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, it is three and three. It is evened up, and Strife Girl is benched. I would I would love to oh. see the bench on camera, yeah. but I don't know if we have that set up. No, we we do. We need we have remote camera, man. Time to get get the get the bench shot, guys. Yeah, we need we need we need to see Strife Crow yeah. feeling miserable on the bench alone. <laughs> yeah, no. and then Kalento is like sitting there next to him just to be. And he's like just on his team. iPad. He's like consoling. <laughs> yeah, Kalento would probably be playing on the iPad. Yeah, just showing him how to actually play Doctor Boom, like showing him this is what Boombots actually the do. The Boombots yeah. should be going there for four, like face <laughs> there. That's where he goes. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, Ecop has to play Warlock. Um, That's two wins Warlock. for Temple Storm, basically. Well, yeah, it's, he basically has to play it until he wins. Yeah, which is Which he's tough. he's probably going to eventually. Yeah, it'll actually hit the Druid. Yeah, it'll, it'll Hunter, have to hit the Druid at least, and yeah. it's favored Hunter against that. Hunter is good against Zoo still. And, and Freeze, I think, is yeah. is really good. Yeah. But, uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, he's going outside? No, no, no. Oh, no. there it is. Oh, it's not, it's not that isolation. punishing. You, you can see things. Or they should have made low enough that you don't see TV. And you <laughs> Wait, he gets to use his phone on what? the bench? That's not a bench. Yeah, take that away from him. What, yeah. what is this? Make him suffer. Yeah, yeah, this has to be like the, the corner in like elementary school. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. And there's never no activities. No That's fun true. allowed. Yeah. The next Amaz organized tournament. In fact, he has to anymore. face the wall. Yeah, he has to face the wall. <laughs> Just go into the corner. <laughs> oh, poor Strife Crow. Yeah. All right. Well, poor guy. He got punished, uh, and both of his decks have been revealed too. Like again, more information. Like some of these decks have some very interesting choices in yeah. it. Mm -hmm. and now you know. It's like oh, he's playing Drew the Saber. He's playing um, really weird. Card. I mean, they. I mean, Gara is seeing the stream as well as he, the game's going on. He knows he has Power of the Wilds. So, like these are interesting tech choices that help feed more information versus like oh, hype loss with Patron. 
Oh, yeah, wait, I, I guess we still have to watch out for Patreon. What, what do you think the, the power of the wild is now that now you should bring it back to light? It, mm-hmm. it feels like, uh, you know, Strife Crow, we talked about how he invented like Dr. Boom being right. good and stuff. <laughs> But I'm pretty sure he also pioneered Violet Teacher Druid. Uh, he was one of the people really pushing for token Druid mm-hmm. back in the day. I think, it, first of all, it was like um, a, a guy named Nick Spats, uh, Speets. I, know, I remember Nick, Nick You know Diva. what I'm talking about. Yeah, I, don't, I remember a, like two uh, names. I'm, I'm really sorry that I don't, like, don't got his name right. Yeah. But uh, it, it was a guy named Nick somebody. Mm-hmm. And he created the Violet Teacher token and won an open tournament with it. And then a few other players started really taking it to the next level. Like he was playing like Imp Master, for example. And then no, I was Saturday playing that before. crappy version of Matter Open. Yeah. And, and then, and that then, was a crappy version. And then people realized Violet Teacher is all you really needed. Yeah. I wonder if he's playing other things like, you know, Arjun Horse Rider, like really aggressive cards. Because... Why would you play stuff like uh, the Druid of Saber unless you're trying to go for early game board control? You have to have like the Living Roots. Yeah, well, you're mentioning, you know, I think Mark of the Wild also is a pretty good pick. Uh, if you're playing Living Roots, if you're playing Druid of the Saber, maybe there's Mark of the Wild in yeah. there. Um, even the, the the sisters, I wouldn't sure. be surprised if there's sure. Mark of the Wild. Mm-hmm. I've seen Calento Theorycraft, something along those lines as well. So, All right, well, uh, it's pretty interesting they sent out Gara's Hunter. I mean, what, when you... In this situation, you literally send out your best matchup, right? Yeah. So I guess they feel like this is the, the best, best matchup. Yeah. Hunter versus Warlock is pretty hard for the Warlock, especially if it's a, a, a hunter that curves well, mm-hmm. and you're gonna you're gonna always be able to go even in board or even a little bit better because mm-hmm. of unleash the hounds. That's a pretty uh, pretty good hand from the hunter, less so from Ecop. Oh, it's getting better though. Yeah, I'm kind of liking it. I mean, it's forcing uh, the hunter to surrender some tempo to uh, deal with the juggler. Gar's playing Bear Trap, of course. Uh, his number one card of the set. Really? That much? He loves. He thinks Bear Trap is the best card in the set. Interesting. At least he I did played, on week one. I played two of them and I hated it. Really? I, one of them I love. He thinks, he thinks it's like, like overkill. he just thinks it's really sick. Okay. Huh. I mean, even if it's the best card in the set, I think he plays only one. Oh man, we have we have the the Gara posture here. Life coach. Posture. Oh my god, <laughs> what happened now? Life coach cosplay. <laughs> is that where he is? I didn't see him this morning. Uh, he, he's actually spending time. I think he's not even here. I think he just like went out with a nice breakfast with his okay. wife. Okay. Okay. Went out in the town because you know you know hanging out in Plano, Texas. You're only gonna be here once in your life, so you got to make the best of it. Yeah. You never, <laughs> <laughs> never come back. Because you're never going to want to come back. Oh, burn. All right. I, th- I thought it was pretty cool. Uh, yeah. Do you want to quick shot this so you can prevent... Yeah, you want to just kill stuff? everything. You yeah, to get that bear it. trap out and force the, the, the warlock to feed you a free 3-3. Three, three. Sure. I mean, you might play snake trap as well. We've seen a lot of beast druids play the snake trap. Um, okay. Well, um... Unless it's... You, if, if anything, we've seen... Uh, hunter, sorry, oh, not these druids. We've, oh, it is snake trap. But we've seen just the variations of traps. Like, these days, we, we don't really see, like, just double freeze or just double explosive too yeah. much. It, it's always, like, if... For some reason, when I see bear, I expect uh, snake. For, like, they seem to go hand-in-hand hand when people play mm-hmm. them. Uh, it seems to, like you just shove all the minion spawning traps to get beast synergy. So yeah. it's kind of like... Uh, yeah, snake trap works really well with bear trap, too. Oh, Wow, double doom guard. Well, that's, that's a pretty guard. nasty. It's a void caller can get off, but we do know there's owls and whatnot in the deck. And now the snake trap has been revealed. Yeah, mm-hmm. you're hoping there's no owl in the in Gar's hand right now if you're Ekov, because that would be devastating. The thing is, though, like, what do you play if you're Gar? Like, that Shredder looks all right right now, but it would be devastating to play. I guess two. Well, if you get two, I guess it's fine. Uh, right? It's still okay, because like the doom guard comes out, the doom guard's gonna go face, and then he can deal with the doom guard afterwards. There's gonna be two doom guards. Isn't there? That's true. Yeah. Okay. There's, there's a maybe, chance maybe, of two Doom Guards here. Right. Maybe that's unless maybe... he pulls up another a demon here. Oh. oh! Well, does that change anything? Because he just eat it up. It's. It's a. That's true. Yeah. He could play the. No, nah, it's kind of hard. And eat it. Yeah. It definitely seems to be preferable because you can guarantee you get a Doom Guard out. Well, do you ever consider just slowing down and going for Implosion, or is that too slow? Because there's a lot of one ones. I think it's too slow. You're starting to lose a lot right now. Okay. Yeah. I was. That's why I was even thinking about double Doom Guard. But I think the Void Terror is okay because it's a huge body on the board. Yeah. So and six, six. You, your Void Caller didn't get silenced. Instead, actually, they played it. They played into Void Caller. So yeah. you know the Hunter doesn't have that many options. And uh, yeah, I think the Void Terror works. And then there's Lice Champion and Gar's Hunter and Sans is a demon. I mean, he still keeps double Doom Guard by doing this. Yeah, yeah, he definitely. does. But like, he's kind of incentivized to tap, or it's like kind of a bit of an efficient turn. It's, I mean, I guess ultimately it's about as good as double Doom Guard, except you just have the other Doom Guard. So yeah. Well, uh, one thing that can also throw this out in the whack is we don't know if Gar is running like. One bear trap, one freezing trap, one mm-hmm. uh, one of each. Yeah, yeah. Like and, a and that like hunter. also makes it really difficult. Yeah. 
So you can deal with um, do you deal with the board? Do you deal? How, how would you deal it? Would you deal it? You have a lot of drag damage. Yeah. Uh, Argus would 10, wreck you. 12. And he has Argus. Yeah. yeah, that is true. Yeah, we've seen too many people go uh, full face, maybe like 20 ish HP, and then get punished I by Argus. I can't at board. least like kill command on the 6 6. And then just trade uh, the spider into it? Yeah. Yeah. Spawn more stuff. I mean. Probably. Yeah, that gives you an opportunity to develop another Haunted Creeper as yeah. well. And then you still have some pretty good options. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then we're going to see Demon Wrath and Zeus soon, soon enough when that kind of deck uh, gets picked up. Dread like you see, Secret no Paladin way. starts also, playing Also, the, the, the other play to save the plan isn't that bad either. Just to yeah. uh, to bow, to bow down yeah. the uh, the Doom Guard with the 4-3. Uh, That's what I was thinking. You're, you're not going to get a defensive trigger on the Shredder. Yeah, it's actually a really good point. Is he going face? No, he's going for... Oh! Oh, he is! Well, oh boy. Defender of Argus. This is gonna suck for him. Well, then again, he does have kill command for the face, and his opponent's pretty low on health. I guess you have to pick yeah. up a bit I guess more direct damage. He's pegging on the fact that his opponent doesn't have Defender of Argus. Exactly, Argus. Because yeah. he's already played two. Yeah. Uh, uh, but Vo Vo I mean, he comes to play with like four less man in the past couple turns, and he does have kill command to get through. Right. So. Is he dead? If one of the two minions stay up... Oh man, Arjun Horse Rider, I that's, think that's pretty useful. That's a pretty big card, yeah. Right? Does that help him get through? With no, I think he's dead. You sure? Or two, yep, pretty sure. Yeah. Oh, he's he, one he, damage he, short from being... Yeah, he can't dead. use the bow mm. to actually trade. No, 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 he not a Shredder. Yeah, he needs a Shredder. Shredder to get a Bluegill Warrior. If he gets a Flame, tongue, if he gets tongue. A flame tongue, he wins the game, I believe. Dire Wolf Alpha also does, I think, right? Because right. it's such an efficient clear. Well... Let's see. But I don't, I don't think this is right because, like, if if you leave, seven, seven. if you leave one up, you know you're dead even to power overwhelming. Like, yeah, he he might he might not have another doom guard, but oof, yeah, he's dead no matter what now. No taunt off the shredder. Oh god. Wow. Nope. Great yeah. Shredder. Wow. Looks like that's it. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> because guard didn't play around the one defender. Body. That's like the biggest win ever for Ekov. Yeah, that's huge. That brings Cloud9 crazy. back. Look at the smile series. on this guy's face. He's like, yeah, I took the, the game with Zoo and I never yeah. thought I could. Uh oh. Uh, the apology. Uh oh. They're sitting across each other. Doesn't that feel weird? I've never asked. Ecops play with like two less mana every single turn for the past three turns. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And yeah. he wins, right? Yeah, he still wins. The Void Caller there. Oh, right? damn. <laughs> He's happy. He is like, yeah, I mean, yeah, you would be happy there. You were, you were like, your, you, your team was in such a dire like, situation. Well, it, it had to be specifically, like, Defender of Argus there. And mm -hmm. if he had, not only Defender of Argus, he had to actually, like, have the second Doom Guard, like, ready to, to go. kill, Because yeah. right. if he didn't, he had that, and he needed Power Overwhelming or two Abusive Sergeants or mm -hmm. kill. Yeah. So. Well, I think, yeah. I think Gar's play at the end was pretty desperate. I think he took a risk that his opponent didn't have Argus, mm -hmm. and he did, and that was like the huge swing. Yeah. I think, I mean, you need a three damage. I mean, it's it's a warlock. If he had more minions in his hand, uh, okay. I think if he had more minions in his hand, he might have considered like a slower play because he mm -hmm. could fight for the board against Zoo. Whereas, like, if you've got it lost, it's pretty much over, right? Like, you, mm -hmm. you can't even recover. So he decided to push phase, um, hoping that his opponent would be forced to make trades. Mm -hmm. It's all on Shrifecrow, so yep. Shrifecrow has to be able to win, but he is unbenched. Yeah. Yeah, so but now, uh, right now, now Eloise's freeze mage, which had so many good matchups going into this, now doesn't really have. Well, there's that paladin matchup. she could find. Yeah, right? but mid mid range paladin With heal bot, I guess, is a bit yeah, tougher. Yeah, like Strefkar has a lot of heals, and he's also got a lot of the aggressive cards still in there. Uh, it's definitely a good matchup for the freeze mage, but I mean, the freeze mage was doing like really well against the priest it was doing really well against the, i think against the face hunter you'd do pretty well against yeah him. yeah uh, you also zoo lock is pretty easy and patron is is kind of bad but hey whatever but now you only got like a paladin which is like a bit good i mean you kind of coin flip as to whether or not you're going to run into it mm -hmm. um the druid is just i wouldn't say terrible because you can still win it right like it's a bad matchup let's be yeah. honest but you can still get like a 30 yeah. 35 maybe uh percent win rate it's not like it's control warrior which would be just devastating yeah, Strife Crow's uh, Druid builds board a lot more than I think normal Druids, uh, at least with what we've uh, saw. Good point. Um, I don't know if that really matters. I think that actually maybe takes away from it, because I think the, most of the Druid decks just... Template have... with bigger minions. He has right. like, small, some small yeah. ones instead. I think the small minions are actually not relevant. <laughs> yeah, they're just going to die. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, uh, again, Tempest Storm isn't a bit of, of a hole here. They just uh, they're just a little bit behind, and uh, in, in the closing moments, that that can mean uh, 
Right. I can't because now something. they couldn't really capitalize off the bench. I think yeah. it's also interesting that they went with Hunter. So maybe Eloise isn't playing Freeze Mage. Yeah, mm. Temple Mage would have actually been like, pretty rough. Yeah, I, I think. think maybe it's in a scenario that they didn't want to play the Mage because it's not Freeze Mage. No, that would be a plot twist. It could just be that you you think the hunter gets a better matchup. But... Yeah, I, I'm just bringing up that. Yeah, that, that's a great. That's a that's yeah. a good point. I mean, if it is tempo mage, we've seen a lot of variants of it come out. Like the, the spell slinger was added nowadays, mm-hmm. um, which adds another you know free spell to your hand, sort of um, more variants, I guess. Not exactly free. Yeah, but like you don't draw it from your deck. It kind of counts as like yeah. three mana draw a card for three four. It's pretty sweet for yeah. for that deck. It's pretty cool. I like the card. Yeah, I don't think I've seen it a single time construct though. Really, it yeah. actually won against Trump in like. The grand. Oh, okay. Yeah, there was like a tournament. I think Tom won against Trump, like a massive. Oh. I think if event. um, I think if this is actually good if Tempo Mage or if uh, they're playing Tempo Mage because then it's good against Druid and pretty decent against yeah. the Range Paladin. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it could easily flip like, oh, maybe it was good against Warlock because they had Freeze Mage, but if they had Tempo Mage, then Trifco still might get cornered, and it simply could come down to Druid versus Druid in game eleven. Um, and, and something s- silly like that. Which one do you think has the edge? Because like we've seen Strike Pro's Druid be a little bit more board centric. Um, assuming you go against, uh, against a mid range, uh, which one is better? Like typical mid range uh, or the most? Uh... It's very diff- It's very different because Druid is one of those matchups where it's like so tempo dependent, and both every kind of archetype has access to like wild growth stuff yeah. as well as uh, innervate so i think it's just really dependent on those card draws as opposed to the archetype okay like, so. like people who used to say slower druids were better than faster druids in the mirrors but then the, they found that the faster druids just still innervate stuff and did too much damage and doesn't matter if you have ancient or probably they, just yeah, more consistent they just go through yeah okay. the consistency helps a lot all right so hype is going to be picking up his druid versus strife crows yeah, we have we have not seen a druid play at all in the tournament this is uh this is going to be a first we've seen strife crows but it was like the the weird talk. Oh, right, right, right. right. That's but right. we haven't seen hypes. Definitely not. So yeah. it could be another, you know, similar twist on Druid. Yeah. Some mm-hmm. more minion base. Could meant we haven't seen hypes Druid at all. Yeah. Right. <laughs> no way. So he's still correct. Yeah. All right, sure. Um, <laughs> right. I am curious, though. I think there's there's a lot of stuff that's possible with uh, with Druid. Just, um, I'm, not, I'm not really feeling any of those variations we talked about earlier that involve no combo. I think, no, I think no combos, they're not here. They're not just, here. Combos just never going away unless Blizzard makes it go away. Just uh, because Druid needs it to win. Yeah. yeah. If yeah. you think about Druid without Savage Run Force of Nature, you you start respecting it a lot less, and then you find out that outside of it's easy to exploit, it, it has to yeah. fight very honestly against minions. It can't just like yeah. sap it and then kill you. Honest fighting. Well, I remember the. We leave that for Arena. Like, <laughs> you just like you, you yeah. tell you get them in the class like, in the list, and then they know what's up. Mm. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, Sylvanas is uh, still pretty interesting to me. I feel like that card gets less and less value the smaller minions people generally play. People wow. right now are playing really? really small minions. Okay. Yeah, it's because you play Sylvanas, and then like their entire board has like two attack. Yeah. Like, so like it, it, two like, turns implosion. later, you mind control something. Yeah. <laughs> Implode yeah. Sylvanas. But the thing is, uh, like with the druids that are a bit slower, I think you can always bank on people playing a round combo. You know, that threat alone might mm-hmm. sometimes allow you to deviate a bit from the typical list. Just kind of uh, abusing the fear. There's a savage combatant of his own. And a wild world. That can be pretty brutal. That's oh. that's gonna be really brutal because he can answer um, with whatever his opponent brings out. Because oh like yeah, Murloc Knight. Is that one of your favorites? Oh, it's everyone's yeah. favorite. Yeah, well, it's it's, up there. it's like Murloc favorite card. Of the Murloc set. Knight brings out a Murloc Knight, and then each Murloc Knight brings out an old Murkai, and then you kill your opponent. <laughs> Yeah, I guess. Happens every time. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. There's a double war leader, right? You know, like just a... I should prop the wild growth from, uh, from Hive. Because he can use the inner the innervate as an extra three damage. So it basically becomes Wrath mm-hmm. after the hero power. Yep, absolutely. It, it is worth evaluating if you want to... Tr- like, realistically, your opponent can't kill the Savage Combat next turn if you innervate it out. Yeah. Uh, he would have to have, like, Blessing of Might. Look, just to well, juggle. You play a minion and juggle his, just and then you juggle. trade it yeah, away. Yeah, I think that's, that's way... The, that's, like, unreliable, I yeah. guess. But then your turn three is kind of wonky, right? I mean, that's so. that's Strafgirl's play, by the way. He has, he has nothing right now, and, yeah. and he doesn't have much else in his deck, is, is the other thing to note. Uh, besides the Sheila Minibots and the other jugglers, I don't... I don't think there is another two drop. Maybe. Unless uh, unless Hype wants to innovate Shredder out so you have something sticky on board. 
Then he gets punished by Archer Protector. I feel like your play is so dominant compared to uh, any other. Like yeah. just Wild Growth and Savage Combatant into Hero Power for three off the interview. Yeah, it looks you, like even have, you even have Curve. I mean, you could play Shredder, I guess, instead of Combatant, because that way the second body will kill whatever's mm -hmm. out after the, the juggler. But here's thing. also mm. an interesting question. If he picks up three drop, then he misses his opportunity to Wild Growth. Right. Okay, well, Shredder mm -hmm. doesn't seem doesn't seem like yeah. it's better than than the Wild Growth play. Not at the moment, no, definitely. Would, would you just like attack face here? Because like you don't trade very well into the shredder, and there's no way for you to get like juggle value otherwise. Mm. So you just like let him trade down. Yeah. But what about living? The, the, the flip side is because you're playing a dude. There's like about a one in three chance that the thing that comes out of the shredder is either useless or has one health. So you tempo the druid because he has That's the incentive true. to uh, hero power down your minion. Yeah, the, the juggle is a sign, strife crow. Although I think you, you could be right, like if it's a one one um, mm -hmm. or anything else, like, like yeah, you know, two one maybe, even, maybe like it doesn't go. matter. Right? I, I I just think in this case you actually can do whatever you want. Okay, and it's like not wrong. Yeah, I don't. I wouldn't disagree with either. But actually, if, oh, with valuing the hands hand. though, he has cog hammer. Right. So exactly. he wants something. He wants like higher mm -hmm. chance for means to stick. That probably is a consideration. Darnassus aspirant. No, see now that's a forgiving draw because both outcomes, whether this stays alive or dies, is still okay. Until he finds one from the Shredder. Yeah, I think so. And you still kill the Juggler because of Mustard for Battle next turn. He plays it before the uh, possibility of Nerubar Weblord screws him over. Oh, not quite. Alright, Coghammer is at least useful. Because you keep the one. Well, by useful, it's the only card you can play, so yeah, yes, it's right. very useful. Well, it kills something at least, right? Yeah. Uh, I think you'd just go for the Darnassus again. Yeah. I mean, you don't know what your opponent has, so you just want to deny as much as you can. Even though I believe uh, attacking the 2 2 is better in terms of board control. Yeah, the thing is, you don't want him to get like, the 5 mana and maybe get a Drew to the Claw. You're not mm. remotely ready to answer that. Like, not remotely. Right. Yeah. Savage Combatant here will threaten any other 5 drop. Or not, sorry, not 5 drop, 4 drop. Also. He might consecrate it. I mean, if it comes out, would you consider just consecrating it off the board by using Coghammer's charge to finish yeah, it off? Yeah, I'd consider it. You still have I mean, a weapon. Yeah. But, um... Yeah, look, that was a follow-up. I, I guess mean, it's it, all right. What are you going to play? It's it's Consecrate or Murloc Knight. It's not a good time for Murloc Knight. Minipod is an option as well, but mm. I, I don't like it as much. Yeah, what what punishes you with mini bot? I mean, Jewel well, of the Claw punishes you, um, but mini, you have consecration mini, to, to kind of make yeah, it mini better. Mini bot's kind of mini, okay. Mini bot actually get, survives next turn. Right? You just take a lot of damage to face. Yeah, is the only Ooh. difference. You take an additional five at the very least. Yeah, boss. And assuming more. that your opponent doesn't have more ways to fill the board, so you might have to right. consecrate again anyways. Yeah, I mean the, well, yeah. The issue is that if you go for the greedy play. And Hype plays Druid of the Claw, you actually don't kill the Savage Combatant again. Oh, that's a good point. So you take another five. Yeah. So this is a play around Druid of the Claw, I, I think you're right. Yeah. This does give initiative over to Hype, and he does have that Azure Drake, which is very significant. Yeah. With Lothab, though, I think the Azure Drake's uh, value is diminished. Like, you can't Wrath and just Hero Power down, say, the Lothab in this case. Yeah. So it's at least pretty okay. I think the Lothab makes. Oh, well, never mind. Is that a change of plans, or do you still go for Lothab? I can't imagine you wouldn't play True Silver. Um, I can't imagine. Yeah. Usually, yeah. Usually, you there's there's so much value in just playing on curve, because um, I mean, even if you True Silver here, then no, you have like, a turn you, six anyway, right? Do you? Murloc Knight is not a good turn six if you're behind no, she'll on the board. Mini True Silver the, is. the thing about uh, the Lothab though is that it does have value as the game extends, so you can stop a combo. If you feel like you're gonna die, yeah. Uh, I guess, but you have two heals. I don't think you need to really stop and the combo. He actually gets uh, well, Drew the Claw, so he can protect the Drake. I mean, if yeah, the, the thing is that between the Truth Over Champion and the Shield Mini Bot, the turn six from Strike Pro is looking fine. Turn seven would be something like Heal Bot Hero Power, just based on his hand, right? Assuming you find nothing better. Is it that bad to charge this even? I'm thinking about it, like because that's eight damage, and if he doesn't have any healing, yep. There it's it is. probably pro like the, the proper play. Well, the there issue is that he has a healing. lot of healing. Yes, some. Healing, yeah, right. some, right? Like just uh, 16 points of damage without true uh, silver. It's above average. Okay. And he can wild growth into a combo next turn. So right. there's actually application for that card. Not to mention that uh, he still has wrath as well, so he can help pick apart this board. 
That actually forces Strife to heal bot on turn seven, which is really bad for tempo. Turn mm -hmm. six, maybe? No. Uh, he'll have seven mana next turn. Yeah. Oh, yes. heal bot. Sorry, I understood shielded bot. Yeah. I don't know why. Uh, I kind of confused both. All Two right. rats. Um, cycle. All right. Well, first he's gonna cycle. He has the hero power if he wants lethal. His face. It is. Yeah. So you can wild growth. Oh well. Hmm. That's a bit tricky. I don't think you play the swipe right yeah, now. Yeah, doesn't seem to make much sense. Like, if, if you just hero power face, you trigger the true silver hit anyway, and he needs a life gain. I mean, that's good enough in my book. And then if things go wrong, then you actually need the swipe. But if you swipe preemptively, you basically force yourself to lose to heals, which is just not very good, I think. Well, you should wild growth now, right? Yes. Yeah, probably. I mean, I can't. if you don't do that, uh, you're, you might just get blown out by any type of... Uh... Defensive play from the opponent. It's still not one even with combo. The swipe gives him a bit more reach at least for the following turns. But, but then uh, if he can heal bot into Tyrion, that's yeah, right. That's effective, and that might even just lock Height out of the game unless he gets Keeper. Nah, it's still not impossible. He can get it done. It's just going to be a little bit of an uphill top deck battle at this stage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Strifecrew knows. It's like okay, okay, you got it. Yeah, you yeah, you're not fooling anybody. <laughs> You, you you spend your turn uh, so if, turn seven doing if, this. If hype draws like hype could have lethal here, um, if you had innervate and the other innervate and a savage roar. <laughs> yeah, uh, you are correct. But he already played. One oh, he already played innervate. Yeah. That's right. That's right. So he can't have lethal. Yeah. There's no. In way. arena, you could. In so way. I forgive you. <laughs> um, so he can't even set up. To, he can't set up two turn lethal. If he swipes the face, hero powers it down, and then his opponent doesn't have taunt or heal. Yeah, you but he doesn't have a heal. He has true silver, so and that, he has that doesn't work. And he has tear. Yeah. But it just doesn't work on the board state. So he can wrath for one, swipe the face, and hero power it down. I think you'd swipe the heal bot just to slow down the game. This is kind of the weakness of the the aspirant. Like whenever you see a late game, I always feel pretty bad for the druid player because it's always that card that does nothing um, when you're just close to getting the game. It's true. I think if you swipe the heal bot, it, it makes sense because he has true silver, so he can still heal out of the range. I think yeah. you swipe that heal power down to two one. He also could be waiting for the yeah, the other uh, savage roar. Yeah, the that's a twenty two er. Yeah, I mean if still he can keep her the Tyrion. Oh nope. wow, he's gonna force the opponent to use the true silver champion charge on the. It's gonna negate the healing, I guess, and bring him back down to nineteen. But that doesn't do anything. Um, no, it's just board presence. It's 18 damage. Yeah. So this is where Tyrion comes down. And uh, Hype will need to draw into the Keep of the Grove. Yeah, Hype, Hype's like to do himself. Like, of course he's got Tyrion. I want to see like a mulch Tyrion. or something off the top. Damn it. Oh. <laughs> be pretty nuts. That would be pretty crazy, actually. Yeah. yeah. I'm surprised we don't see a one out of that card. In, uh, I saw I saw like a Reddit post where someone like mulched and then it gave him like the exact draw same match card? or something, oh, so wow. he killed him. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you mulch that Lepernome and then Grom match comes out. Yep. Yikes. A very painful exchange. Now Strifeco can uh he can basically load up the board and do stay oh a my card god. Out. Yeah, that's a pretty good way to load up the board. Yeah, well, originally I was thinking Murloc Knight with uh, Hero Power and the Aldor. Uh, the Aldor, yeah. but Doctor Boom might even oh. be better. Well, there we go. How it is. Well, let's see what kind of Murloc we get. It's too bad there's no like taunt Murlocs. Maybe a few expansions. Yeah. Murloc tank. <laughs> wow, this is the worst, right? More Actually, Murloc, maybe Murloc Raiders are the worst. Murloc, Murloc Raiders are the worst. Yeah. Well, doesn't look like there's any chance here. Uh, even if Hype gets something good off the Shredder. He, he just has to combo here, right? Yes, he has to combo to not lose. Uh, you know, we're talking about like the lineup, like the Zoo and the Paladin being weak spots for Cloud9, but I think we're just flat out, like, completely... Well, to be fair, it's like, Strifeco did end up drawing, like, a very good sequence of denial right. from being able to pressure. Mm -hmm. Also, Paladin Virtue is not that bad. Yeah, I think it's pretty close to 50. Anyway. Yeah, it's like one of those things that could go either way very easily. Uh, full safety mode. Yeah, chances are good that there's no other Murlocs in the deck besides the other Murloc Knight. Yeah, which uh, ends up might buffing it. This is going to be really close to the game though. Like in the end, it looks not really close at all because Doctor Boom and the Lay on Hands, but it was pretty close. Yeah, yeah. 
It was one draw away, I guess, from going for yeah, like either if way. If you didn't have the heal bot, if you yeah. didn't have Tyrion. Well, it's still. Is it over? Does. Pretty much is. I mean, yeah. what could Hive find that would even. Yeah, stay BGH alive? would not be enough. Right, because there's just too much damage on board. Right. Yeah. The, the so bringers that's going to be a 5 3 lead, and they're going to have to 3 0 the. Double naturalize team. off the uh, Ancient of Lore. Wow. I wouldn't put it past that. Wow. <laughs> I, you think, put it, I would put it yeah, fast. Smart hide, yeah. Yeah. Double naturalize. I think it's great, right? Makes sense. Total sense. Oh, he's thinking about something. Yeah. There's something that kills Dr. Room and doesn't kill him here, I think. Uh, how? That's not even possible. Well, I mean, you wouldn't do this otherwise because you'd, you'd be revealing information. Fair enough. Oh, wow. Right? Sure. There has to be a way in his deck. He was thinking about it and he made the play. Right. I'm counting on naturalize. Yeah, you're counting on like a single naturalize maybe just to remove some minions out of the Naturalize Force of Nature Savage. Yeah, like the turn dream. 10, right? You're guaranteed Oh, that would be so cool. The dream. Yeah. yeah. What have we started? Mm, well, I don't know. <laughs> maybe something that's like really new. Next week on Lyra, yeah. that's <laughs> every like Everybody's playing like naturalized <laughs> druid. Yeah, oh, God, what like a nightmare. That would be the craziest thing. But then again, you just play like Patron. You draw more cards, you're good to go, right? I mean, they'd only do that when you kill you. So oh, no. right. Yeah, no, that wouldn't. So they wouldn't play naturalized. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Gar Gara's yelling. Yeah, he's like, dude. That's, that's angry Gara. Yeah. Angry uh, Gara. Yeah, I guess so. I mean, I've, I've seen angry Gara. Have you? Yeah, I've never seen him angry. I've, I've seen, seen him disappointed, but many times. Do you think there's some chance he's gonna throw the chair at Hype here? <laughs> well, <laughs> maybe at himself. Oh. I mean, he didn't. Oh, uh, no. He didn't def play around Defender Vargas, so nah, that's a good I, I don't really feel like. Okay, well, I guess the the debate with there's a lot of like qu plays you can debate with these guys. So, yeah. uh, the the wild growth, not wild growth on turn two, and then ends up using it for the combo instead. I how, think that, how did that I think change? That hurt a lot. That changed a lot of the game's outcomes. I think I think you would have snuck in so much more damage. It would have yeah, been hard to even yeah. keep up with. Just but I think it's kind, of, it's kind of scary when you're you're facing on a juggler. There might be a mini bot on the back end, and then you just fall off the yeah. board because you mm -hmm. can't uh, can't compete with it. Uh, yeah. And All right. In the end, it's like with that many lines of play that are very gray area. It's like you just don't know the outcome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that uh, slightly strange druid from Strife Crow. Uh, it's going to get three tries among each of Tempest Storm's members. And, well, it's it's going to be tricky. I think the faster druid does better against the hunter. Um, although, I, I one thing imagine. that's tricky is that Gar's traps have been revealed. He knows it's bear trap. He knows it's snake trap. He hasn't seen bear trap, I, I don't think. Yeah, we saw in the mall. opening mall yeah. yeah. But like, he does, okay, so he just transmitted the information over yeah. right? Yeah. Um, the, and then if it's Tempo Mage, Faster Druid does do better against that too. I think because you can't change decks in this whole uh, starting set, like yeah, I think you, you can change your decks on the last day, but you can't change them on the first two days. So if you're going to lose, you might just keep the mage hidden. We don't even know what it is. Yeah, so, so you just don't even reveal it to anyone and bring yeah. it back. I think there's, you have to win with all three. So I think, if anything, the only thing we can predict is Eloise is not playing until she's last. Uh, well, that said, I think she'll probably play next. <laughs> just because if, if, if it's Tempo Mage, it's their best chance of winning. But they have to win with all of them. So with it doesn't matter yeah. what their best chance is. There's no game differential. Yeah, I guess the hype not bench true, might true. make it like might a make a point. difference. Yeah, um, I think like the hunter from statistics. Gar's like, don't you want to try your highest win rate every single time so you can? Maybe against an emotional player with Strife Crow. Who cares? Okay. Yeah, emotional Strife Crow. I don't know. He's only got like good emotion. I asked. I actually talked to Strife Crow what he's like looking forward to doing like tonight, and that was like yesterday. He's like. Man, I'm reading this good book. Yeah, he told me he's like, yeah. oh, like he wants to go books. Like, <laughs> yeah. you know, you're here playing for one hundred fifty thousand yeah, dollars. Like, <laughs> yeah, he, and he like laughs and he goes, "Yeah, but I really want to read that book." And, yeah, <laughs> and, and then you actually time. check the book. It's yeah. like how to manage stress. Yeah. yeah. So, so if Strafford just loses against the mage, just absolutely, it would affect zero, like zero plays, zero everything. Just wouldn't matter. Okay. Yeah. So the definite answer is like just play whatever. Yeah. But not mage. Yeah. Okay. It's just you just give your opponent something, so it's not worth giving away. Yeah. What if what if they play the two first and then they get to mage and they lose it? Mm. We have, you have to think about that. Like, um, it's so important to win today to, to just get that first right. point on the board. But even if you lose, you you, you still want to just you know do your best to maybe come out of it. Yeah. I mean, if you go two one, you're still fine. Like losing one game here is like a problem. But um, Gara brought Druid. Uh, I'm pretty sure Gara brought Hunter. We yeah. Updated it from okay. Druid. Yeah. yeah okay. I think it's the the other Druid player. 
So, what do you think the mid range? I mean, because the, the hunter from Gar seemed like it was fine. It's forcing the opponent to have swipes mm -hmm. very often, and triggering the bear trap and dealing with it on the same turn is pretty tricky. Well, you completely relevant to that. I never realized Gar was holding mana crystals in his hand and his really? his art there. Yeah. yeah. It's actually. I thought that was like some frost spell, like blizzard. Oh, you think or so? It really thought. looked like mana crystals. But when you say mana crystals, it also looks like that too. Yeah. So two druid of the sabers. Yeah. That gives you some very good early board game board control. You keep the swipe against Hunter, or don't you? Because I'm you have really you have a pretty... to, You know, either snake trap. You know, there's haunted creepers. It seems like a pretty good keep. Um, the Savage, I'm not sure about, but again, it's a pretty like strong card to remove. Savage so, so Command isn't really that practical. Um, it's only good if it sticks, and it's probably not going to against the Hunter. Yeah. The, yeah, I, I, you don't have any ramp to, to really benefit off of it either. Yeah, also, probably what you're attacking into has one health. Right. It depends. Yeah. I mean, um, it, it's like surprisingly scientists. good against Bear Trap. That's true. But. Huh. Yeah, uh, I mean that's that's something that he has to account for. Mm -hmm. I, I I would say I would make a prediction. Trevor just tosses that away, and he does. So uh, the early game Drew the Sabers will have to do a lot of work, but Guard does have some early game board control, and the Arching Horse Rider is really sick. Wow! Oh, and he didn't keep the Savage Combatant. Uh, it's all right. He can still double uh, double Drew. Here. It would have been so sick yeah, though this turn. Did. Imagine. I don't know if you'd want to do that though. Yeah, you attack in the bear trap and then you kill it. Like, are you really going to try to race a hunter? Uh, sometimes I, I you might, have to. Yeah, in this yeah but it's up. usually like a mid game push. Yeah, that's fair. Oh, fair enough. So. Oh, wow. Savage War's already set up. Yeah, you might race. Now, one thing that I think Strife was evaluating is if you should attack with this at all. I think if you keep it stealth, you can drop Lotheb next turn and attack with both. Yeah, and then it could go Savage War. Yeah. I mean, that maybe one reasonable. stealth and minion is fine enough on its own. Your opponent doesn't have coin, yeah. so you don't have to worry about Houndmaster if he has it. Okay. And so this will prompt Gar to go for Animal Companion, I believe. Yeah, I mean, you don't want a quick shot here, that's really the only other option. Or the horse rider, but even that is pretty weird. If you want to play horse rider when you attack into something. Yeah. Well, I mean, the, the thing with the horse rider is that it would kill either of these guys since they're stealthed. It really doesn't matter much. And when they're unstealthed, oh, you really might be able to. Huffers? So one of these will trade the huffer then, right? I imagine. I mean, yeah. Lotha would otherwise die to the two minions, or. Ooh. So this is this Nim is this like a variation of Nimsh's deck? Uh, I don't know about Nimsh's the deck. The wild, yeah. wild. Wait, that's the, divine, the wild, yeah. that's the Divine Shield one. Yeah, you... He plays both, yeah. Kalento okay. built this, I think, yesterday. I saw him uh, mess around with the... Uh, what do you have deck? in this deck that targets outside of Mark of the Wild? Um, Mark of Wrath, Wild. but it's Wrath. like the Divine yeah. Shield one. Yeah. So it wouldn't work. You uh, hey, it literally wouldn't yeah. work. Yeah. I mean, it's a tempo minion. Like, how many 3-mana three 3-4s three the Druids have, right? Like, it's one of those mm. things where you can get a little benefit out of it sometimes, mm. and it's not... It's not meta to Alright, well actually the attack makes it so Arjun Horse Rider is a pretty good play. Yeah, but then swipe on the other end. Um well you're a hunter. I don't think you play around stuff. No, we, we just we just saw him do that <laughs> last true. game. That's true. Oh wow. Yeah. There you go. Consistent yeah. play from Gar. Yeah. I mean yeah, that's his that's his style of hunter. That's his brand. That's that's everyone's style. <laughs> And that's his as well. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it's uh, it's not it doesn't have to be unique, right? To be his. Yeah. So, I swipe mean, face. You, yeah, you swipe face obviously after trading. Like, yep. The thing is, is there going to wait for Guard to stabilize after this point? Because if he's forced to play Lothab just to equalize Lothab with the bonus Lothab. Lothab, that's that's absolutely disgusting. So you'd almost have to just play Ooh. Mad Scientist and hope for a better call. Mm -hmm. Gar is mad. Yeah, he's like unbelievable. Gar, a maddest shaman. Yeah. All right. Wow, the low, the sacrificial Lothab basically. Is it even going to be that? It's just necessary based off of uh, his curve. Yeah. Adder Drake in response. Does that warrant a trade just because he's like. I don't know. I think he might just go face here. Living yes. Roots actually make. Like, the Keeper of the Grove and Living Roots finishing off Lothab. You can target your own Light Bane with Living Roots. No, you One can't because the, the Divine Shield triggers before the spell yeah, resolves. We, so. we're just, I'm just talking about other things. It works with the Dark Bane, though. Yeah. yeah. It's like, oh, I'm, I'm one damage off lethal and I have Living Roots and uh, the Dark Bane. You what know? if it's like there's the Dark Whispers here and we just don't know it? Yeah, I mean. That's it's, nice. Yeah. Make a, an 8 9 taunt. <laughs> 
with Divine Shield. All right. And, uh, Master hoots. Jouster, get at me now. Yeah. Yeah, Strick was thinking about it. I mean, yeah, this is a lot to think about. I mean, I, I feel you, like you need to initiate the race. Fine, you have Savage Roar, you probably win a race. Yeah, I really like this because Keeper of the Grove just gives you so much like trading. Like once they trade into whatever you've got on the board, Keeper of the Grove mm -hmm. finish it off. Or Roots, I mean, pick one. Yeah, and well, if I had the Ardent Horse Rider, that'd be that'd be, be insane. That'd be a pretty. We good need Blood Mage Thanos here, right? Like you just Blood Mage Quick Shot. <laughs> yeah, Blood Mage Thanos, <laughs> right? Well, Unleash would have done the job pretty well. Yeah. Really well, actually. Yeah, Lothar wouldn't even take damage. Yeah, terribly well. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was actually Lothar. crazy. It would because you wouldn't have a. Yeah, you would have. Yeah. You'd be missing out on a little bit of. Well, I don't really know how Garth thinks he can win this, right? Like, it looks all, it looks dire from this position. He might. I mean, it well, could... Stri Striker doesn't have much to back up the current board. Yeah, but you, you're just scared That's of why Gara, face. Right? I'm talking like from Gar's perspective, you've got a really big... You're afraid, right? You think yeah. being off-tempo against a Druid, usually you win because you're forcing them into like a zoo-like board that you have, um, and they have to respond to it. Oh. Oh man, is this going to be like the He's sword? racing? He's going to rely on quick shot to, wow. to save him. So it's like, you either have lethal now or I win. Does I like this. Lethal? Uh, does he? He has plus six, plus two, plus three. Yeah, that has to be yeah, lethal. Yeah, that's yeah. lethal. With the and that's down. the end of the series. So, uh, Cloud9 starts off very strong with a, a convincing 6 3 victory. Yep. Yeah, it doesn't get, uh, doesn't oh, get better. Yeah. I mean, their pick was rewarded because I know that they were looking at the lineups and they're mm -hmm. like, no, we'll pick uh, Tempo Storm. But um, I guess they they were they were picking Tempo Storm not because they were targeting Hyped Gara though, but those were the guys that end up losing the most. Yeah, and I think that's just how it is. Like these team series are always really unpredictable. Mm -hmm. You yeah. just never can really figure out that's exactly the way it went. But that's also like you can't just blame it on draws. There's lots of plays that uh, you could agree or disagree upon. I think. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I mean yeah, we we definitely had some pretty close calls on some of the plays. Uh, smiles all around from. Uh... From Cloud9, though. Look at that. Oh, no, no, not Kalento. No, no, Kalento doesn't smile. But the no, cool thing. He's, I, he's telling Striker what he misplayed. Yeah, yeah like, what did he misplay I know that there? for a fact. <laughs> when, his, when his finger goes up, Kalento is yeah. teaching somebody yeah. about Hearthstone. That's, mm -hmm. that's, that's a fact. <laughs> oh, I think the Striker is agreeing with saying, no, 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 yeah. but. No, 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 but. And Kalento's like, no, you're wrong. All right, let's, let's go. Let's oh, go. smile's gone. Yeah, that's yeah, it. Yeah. See, they're not even happy. <laughs> they're like, like, we no, won, but this is terrible. I'm leaving Cloud9. Oh, oh, great things. Oh, first, yeah. Wow, yeah, Strifecrow has been getting pretty cocky today, but we, yeah. we can go ahead and uh, welcome the winners on. Yeah. Am I, I getting welcome? Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Right, so am I sitting here? Wait, 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 who's sitting here? Who's I can stand, it's okay. I'll be our, our okay. seating representative. All right, welcome everyone. <clears throat> Where's my mic? Uh, oh, everyone oh, oh, oh. is sharing the mic <laughs> today. Yeah. Actually, why don't you, why don't you sit? No, 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 I'm, I'm standing. Okay, I'm standing. okay. <laughs> you should sit here then. Because I'm the most quiet. Sure. All right, you guys have the privilege of hitting the button just once. That you guys can hit, hit the it. button. GG. GG. There we go. <laughs> All right, so you guys are uh, pretty high up on spirits. I think most people are just curious on the uh, the recent uh, interaction that happened between Kalento and Strife Crow. Did did he play terribly? Is he off the team? Um, no, Strife Crow played well. We, oh, okay. we, we were yeah. talking mostly okay. about. We were talking about other teams. We were talking oh, about. Okay. We were talking about okay. how bad Tempo Storm played. We just we just we just saw Strife Crow go from like smiling to not smiling after Kalento's finger was pointing. Uh. <laughs> yeah, but overall, great stuff, guys. Um, what did you guys think of, of Tempo Storm? I mean, uh, wh why was it targeted, and is it, is it what you guys expected? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> okay. We still don't know what kind of mage shield is brought. Mm -hmm. No, we have some guesses. I guess there's no point in saying on stream. I don't know if that would be good, but uh, yeah, I mean, I don't think we did anything that they didn't expect either. It's like so. I guess it's just I don't. I think both teams just kind of did their own thing, but mm -hmm. yeah. Now we had a bit of a gap between uh, the last time we had uh, ATLC in, in the uh, in the qualifier stage, uh, and here we are at the finals. And uh, did you guys expect to see some more wild stuff? I mean, we saw a little bit of wild stuff, but uh, I mean, what did you guys expect out of Tempo Storm? Um, I definitely thought that Tempo Storm would be um, the most the most un, um, yeah the most hard to read team. Um, I thought um, because like they they didn't they barely streamed any competitive decks. Mm -hmm. I think. And uh, we kind of pinned down what they might play based on based on their personal preference, mm -hmm. and also like the reason we picked the Tempo Storm as well because we thought um, skill wise they would be the weakest team as well. Wow. 
I so, thought Gara would bring a weird hunter, and it, I thought it would hurt their chances too. Did it? I don't know. Okay. It, was <laughs> it was weird. It had like bear trap as well. Oh, okay. bear trap is weird. Yeah. I know. Bear trap uh, yeah, is weird. Yeah. Okay, it's weird. And it's more like about other teams too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If you don't face Temple Storm, who do you face? They're pretty scary too. Yeah. Well, we, we do have the other teams coming up. Um, what, what do you guys think about that? Uh, you guys uh, pick in Temple Storm. You made uh, you made Nylum face off against Value Town. Is there some strategy component to that as well? I per- we pretty much only thought about ourselves. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's important easy. to win that first match because it's yeah. really important to just go to, to zero. zero. Yeah. Yeah. Winning up. the first match obviously increases the chance of right, going to right. zero. So. All right. Well, congratulations. Any other thoughts, guys, before we uh, we head off? Um, I mean, get wrecked, Temple Storm. I guess. <laughs> get wrecked, Temple oh. Storm. Oh. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, uh, we'll be right back. We'll uh, start up the the next series. We will take a fifteen minute break to to get everyone in place, get everything settled. So stick with us. We'll be back shortly.